folks, welcome to the spread. Brand new show, video video show. See a video there, all of us. Um, for Legion Podcast YouTube channel. With us today, this afternoon, is uh top of the screen as I'm seeing from Kill the Cast and Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space. Mr. Jerry Harry, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Fine. To the right of him from my show and the NFW commentaries. <laughs> my show being Sin Podcast. Suzanne is here. How you doing? Greetings! <clears throat> Sunday hangover cure. Woo! <laughs> oh man. And uh somebody got to know. Writer, director, and now has a brand new show to tell us all about at the bottom of your screen, Mr. Cameron Scott. Yeah, uh, yeah, just actually recorded a, a new episode of that show today, Cinema G Generation. I'm on show number seven. Nice. Uh, probably going to release it in about a week or so, start dropping them, but yeah, everything's going good. I'm doing good with quarantine. It's all a confidence game, ain't it? You know, do, do, do I sound like shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, how do I sound? How do I sound? <laughs> oh my gosh. And with us, finally, last but certainly not least, uh, from the Cinema Attack podcast, Celluloid Dissections. Am I leaving anything out, sir? Derek uh, B is here. <laughs> also, uh, co host with Jerry on Underwater Kaiju. Yes. And uh, also, uh, They're Here podcast. Yes. I'm also part of. I'm, I'm sorry, Lacey, ahead of time. I didn't mention that show. And. It's not. It's not because I don't like you. I promise. I love you, but I, I, I'm, I'm forgetful about these things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the point of the show, and I, I didn't. St- you know, Jerry said he's gonna do something like this, so I don't want to say, hey, this is gonna be two things. It might be one thing eventually. This is just the pilot for something. I've been tossing around for about I don't know two weeks, a year. You know, I just let people argue about film and, and what they love, and um, so this is uh list show spawned where you would give us your top five of something and your bottom two of something because it's, it's, it's important to take the good with the bad right people yeah. so yeah. um yes this time real softball for everybody um fave favorite directors um films i picked the director with a real short list i'll get that in a second but jerry tell us first who you pick sir uh, i picked a shiro honda I, I have no I probably know a couple of films. I don't know the person's um by name though for sure. Oh you 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 know who oh, yes. he is. Oh I know who he is then he is. That's oh, that's where nice. Jerry that's where Jerry lives right there. Look, look at the spines. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will bust out Godzilla stuff all day. I yeah, you will. <laughs> Susan. Everybody know what you I, they thought you were gonna pick. What did you pick instead? You know, I looked at my top shelf and I realized that I had three movies by one person who's not typically known for horror sitting there, and I picked John Frankenheimer. Nice. I'm, I'm excited to hear your uh, your, your list there. <laughs> Cameron, who'd you pick, man? Uh, I went with a classic. I chose John Carpenter. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. Which I told you, I can only pick me don't rip, rip on Starman. These are important things in my life, and I, I've been very upset. <laughs> You know, uh-huh. he's oh, not. Man, you, might, you might have to mute me. No, so. Oh, snap! <laughs> <laughs> Derek B, who'd you choose, man? I chose uh, the late Tony Scott. That's yeah. He's had a very varying yeah. film career, and I kind of, I kind of dig that. That's so I was kind of excited that you picked that guy. <laughs> yeah, something a little different. <laughs> um, I picked somebody whose tenth feature film comes out this year, so. It's kind of a low list, you know, of films that he made, but I, I think he always brings something to the table. I picked Wes Anderson because uh, I like it, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> you know? We all got our top five lists, and I'll yep. start with Jerry first and uh, ask him, what is your top five Honda film, number five? Uh, so when doing this list, I made sure to limit myself to two Godzilla movies, and I would start with a Godzilla movie, and I'm going to end with a Godzilla movie, so we're going to start with Invasion of Astro Monster. Nice. I uh, have that stuff as well. <laughs> AKA Monster Zero. Uh, great movie. It's actually uh, the movie that made Honda leave the Godzilla franchise for a bit because he didn't like how like Godzilla's dancing in it and, and Rodan and him are talking. He didn't really like that kind of stuff that was going on. But still, when you watch this movie, the story's interesting. 
The cinematography is great. The monster fights are fun. Uh, the aliens in it are great. You can definitely tell he knew what he was doing and had control uh, to make everything fit just right. And it is held as one of the greatest Godzilla movies from the Showa era. Hell yeah. Cool. I'll start at the bottom. Uh, bottom right there. Derek B., what about you, man? Number, top f- number five, Tony Scott film. Uh, number five for me, I uh, picked up The Last Boy Scout. <laughs> uh, love this movie. Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans. Fun time. I love the opening when it's like this this weird macho guy is singing football not nah, to nah. And you know, there's that great scene where he's fucking just playing puppets with the beaver. Hey, how you doing? He just fucking starts killing bad guys. Uh, <laughs> super fun movie. I think, uh, you know, I think Shane Black actually wrote the screenplay for that one where yeah. you'd have that, uh, you know, that comic thing, like the Lethal Weapon series later on. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, I just love the whole ending. It takes place during this climax on a football field. How could you not love that shit, you know? Uh, one of the better Bruce Willis performances, you know, like later day Willis, it's like, okay, do you care in this movie, Willis? This is one of the <laughs> great prime Willis movies still, so you got that going. And I think he works well with Damon Wayans. It's a different uh, flavor to their performance. It's a fun movie. If you like your cheesy fucking comedy action movies with buddy romances and it. it's kind of funny <laughs> you had a very young Halle Berry in that movie um looking fine yeah, yeah I'm thinking about it right now see <laughs> <laughs> she looked really hot back in those days yeah and then you have a uh, like a the, the whole like subplot too in the beginning where he finds out his buddy's banging his ex-wife played by fucking D-Day from Animal House Bruce oh, McGill yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to DNA. He ended up fucking Bruce Willis' wife. Yeah. And you got Taylor Negron as a heavy in that movie, which never happens. So, yeah, and Kim, that shit too. and Kim Coates. I think Kim Coates is in that too. He gets killed right away. It's freaking great. And oh, man. Cameron? Fun I'll kick you to you. I'm sorry. I'll kick you next, Cameron. I'm sorry if I cut you off, Derek. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, my, my number five is uh, They Live, uh, which was a hard hard one to, to put it a number five on any list. I mean, it's uh, no, it was <clears throat> Roddy, Roddy Piper's, you know, ultimate pentalit role. I mean, when you got lines like, you know, I'm come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum, that's transcended time. People in future generations will be quoting that and won't even know what the hell it was from, but... Uh, to me, it's one of the last really great um, John Carpenter films, you know, because he went from great to good to, eh, I hate to say it, but, uh, you know, that that fight scene, I mean, come on, that, that that's that's worth the entire admission price alone. Yeah, that and Alien Boobs, you know, you gotta, gotta love that, you know. With, alien uh... Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> alien Boobs for the win. No, that line that line was improvised, the bubblegum line and people who, you know, play video games that didn't watch that movie will contribute to Duke Nuke Duke Nukem and they should not because it's not true. That's not where that came from, you know. I think it was just a leftover one liner that Piper had written down for from his wrestling days or something, if I remember right. I think so. It came from from the hot rod and uh in life and in cellular, he always uh Came from the heart, man. I love, I love that guy. I got to meet him a few times over the years. Had love for Piper. Man. Suzanne, top yeah. five, number five, number five, freaking Harbor film. Wow, this one was tough, but I went with this movie called The Whole Croft Covenant with Michael Caine. Based on a Robert Ludlum novel, and his his books just don't, for me, never really translate that well to screen. This one didn't as well, but it's just shot beautifully. You've got some great scenes. You've got Michael Caine gritting his teeth like nobody else can. Um, And it's got, for me, it's weird. It's got like this little Hitchcock element to it because you don't really quite know what the hell this covenant is all about. You just know that it's these children of these Nazi officers and they signed into some pact where they'd stashed a bunch of money. But I mean, it's just it's it's vague, vague at best. But the the actors keep you going. The the fight sequences, 
just the, the the red herring in the way everyone just is double crossing each other, which is it's great. It's a great suspense film. It's it, like it's it it, it, can, it has its moments where it's difficult to follow, but it's what it lacks in substance. It picks up for the style, and I just I've always just had a soft place in my heart for this movie. Mm-hmm. Excellent. <clears throat> my number five Wes Anderson film is the one that he put out last. Uh, ironically, I guess. Isle of Dogs, uh, film that me and Derek and Carly are going to cover. I don't know who else is coming on the show, but uh, I'm a sucker for stop motion animation. Uh, I'm not a big fan of one of the other ones he done in stop motion. I'm just, you know, a spoiler for for my bottom two. It, <laughs> it's in it, okay? Uh, it's a great film, great story about you know people just just tossing tossing aside one thing. For, you know, some contagion reason, you know, humanity, it could be a monster, much like today's kind of relevancy, you know, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) but Atari is a character in the film that it goes uh, to Garbage Island where they dumped all these dogs to go find his dog that was discarded. And uh, he forms a pact and a friendship with all the dogs on the island. Great voice talent that's been showcased throughout all of Wes Craven, Wes Craven's, Wes Craven, Wes Anderson's uh, films, different, different, different filmmaker. <laughs> um, and just fun to watch. And if you like, if you love stop motion, you haven't seen it. It's a, uh, it's, um, it's really fun. And I think one of the best aspects of it is that the humans could speak English, but so could the dogs because the barks have been translated for film. And there's a subtitle on the bottom that says that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I love dogs. Number five, check it out. Can't wait to hear you hear my thoughts on that. <laughs> okay, man. Jerry, number four on the film, sir. So number four, we're gonna go with a non kaiju Ishira Honda film, but it's still in the sci-fi realm, and uh, that is the H Man. It is a great story when it comes to nuclear ghost slime things. Uh, it deals with gangsters, it deals with detectives, it deals with a lady who apparently should not be able to afford a TV, but she does, and that's suspicious. Uh, Derek knows this movie, he covered it with me on Underwater Kaiju, and it's just a good movie, it has a great feel to it, the, like, watching it, you really do just sit there and go, man, you feel like you are inside that time in history, and I, I love Japanese, like, detective and Yakuza stories. Throw in a little uh, science fiction element, and I'm fucking sold. Yeah, I, I like the score to that one, too, from what I remember oh, yeah. when we reviewed it. It's very uh, percussion-based. We like, it's symbolism and drums, and, you know, it has a lot of that. It's from the same guy who did, uh, the score did, like, a lot of the Kurosawa films, like The Seven Samurai and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I mean, Ashiro Honda and Akira Kurosawa were best of fucking friends yeah cool uh go to my right here suzanne number four frankenheimer film oh for number four i had to go with black sunday um excuse me <clears throat> gotta love allergies <clears throat> anyway black sunday everyone knows about this one terrorists attempt to blow up a blimp over a Super Bowl. Hell yeah. And it is so action-packed. Bruce Dern is just at his maniacal best in this movie is one of the head terrorists. And I, it's, this one is just, if it, it's just suspenseful. It's action. And it's just, I, I love the inner cuts of the football because I believe they actually use footage of some, a couple of teams playing. So, and it also kind of cured my, I don't have any sports to watch right now, blues. <laughs> Robert Shaw too, right? <clears throat> yes. Robert Shaw. Um, oh well, God. That, I, if, that, if that doesn't sell you right there, I don't know what can, you know, Bruce oh, Durr, yeah, Robert exactly. Shaw. Oh yeah. Shaw and Durr. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Black Sunday. I don't know. Man. Derek only, B. Only sorry, Black go. Sunday I know is Baba. Yeah. If I done Baba, that was going to be in my top five too. Hell yeah. She loves both, see? D- Derek B., uh, number four. Uh, um, I went films, with, yeah, for the next Tony Scott and my number four, I went with Enemy of the State. 
uh, of course, a uh, Will Smith, uh, Gene Hackman joint. Uh, I dig this movie because it reminds me a lot of it's kind of like a pseudo sequel kind of to Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation because Gene Hackman kind of plays that same character, like an older version that he played in The Conversation from years ago. Uh, I like it. It has a lot of great like cameos by character actors in it. Like you get like Stuart Wilson that pops out of nowhere, Gabriel Byrne. Uh, young Jack Black and Seth Green, <laughs> like what the hell, you know John Voight's like the bad guy. Right. You get like a coked out Tom Sizemore as like a mobster. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that, you know. And you know it's it's fun. It's actually one of the, you know, like Will Smith's like it's it's, it's prime Will Smith day, and I think he works well at Hackman. I like that aspect where uh, you know they trying to stop this people to fucking killing them because they know something that. They shouldn't know. And, you know, I like, like, kind of, like, these conspiracy, like, spy movies and that aspect. And I like the color tones that Scott used to direct this. It's a very grayish film, which, uh, you know, because he was, like, a music video, like, guy before he started and commercial director. So he knows how to tinge his movies. And I like that it feels like this gray atmosphere to it throughout it. And it ends with a bang. Yeah, man. It's always good. Cool. Cameron Scott, number four, John Carpenter film. Uh, num- number four uh, might surprise people on the list, but uh, or on the show, but uh, Halloween. It's uh, not my number one, but I can't deny how iconic it is. I, I'm a huge slasher fan, and I mean, let's, let's face it, it's the genesis of Michael Myers, and whether you like that, you know, the Halloween series or you don't like the Halloween series, you can't deny the the impact that it had on the slasher genre and that an amazing soundtrack. Um, I'm a typical Carpenter fan. I can't stop talking about his music more than I can uh, talk about his uh, movies. But, you know, Donald Pleasance is so good as Dr. Loomis, and it was the genesis of a legend, you know, and I... I, I, I kind of tongue-tied but <laughs> you know you got Jamie Lee Curtis is amazing in it PJ Souls is amazing in it everybody is really amazing in it and there's kind of the the underlying humor that I I love with uh, Loomis's character you know he he's trying to you know to to get Michael Myers and nobody will listen to him and that's the ongoing thing with like the whole series is without getting off into the other movies but you know I always found that humorous you know he was always kind of like a I like Loomis because he's a cat. A ca- a, he's like a Captain Ahab going after Moby Dick. And that's what I kind of love about the movie. And he was clearly erect. He's looking at those children smiling. I'm starting out there, you know. <laughs> that's actually, you mentioned that. That's my favorite scene, you know. Hey, Lonnie. <laughs> Get your ass out away from there. Mm. That's great. He, he he loved that part. You know, like he could have just if they could have caught Michael, he would have had no problem going along the rest of the movie, just like fucking up trick or treaters everywhere. Oh yeah, uh, that's why I love him in part five because he's just using kids as body shields and shit, <laughs> tearing down like decorations and shaking children around like they're rag dolls. Yeah, yeah. By by the time you hit part five, he he gave no fucks. Yeah, I I forgot to mention that when Derek was talking about Last Boy Scout that. Daniel Harris is in that movie, and she develops that resting bitch face very young. And I... <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah, <laughs> very young. I think she was in that and Mark of De- for Death the same Mark for Death, time. Yes, yeah. but the same time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> my number four, Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson flick. It's kind of hard. I was I was tossing between the two, but um, I I didn't rewatch the ones that I didn't that I didn't see. 30 times or 20 times. I, I exaggerate, of course. But number four is Rushmore. Um, that, um, yeah, I know. Bill Murray, Jason Schwartzman fighting over um, oh, what's it? Olivia, Lady from the Sixth Sense, which I think the actress's last name. But um, she's a teacher that both, both pining for. Her. Jason Schwartzman is a over overachiever in a way, not in academics, but in, in, in extracurricular activities at Rushmore Academy gets thrown out to go to public school. And of course, the whole way him and, uh, old Bill Murray are fighting for the affections of this older woman who he has no shot with, but Bill Murray is, is ruining his chances too. The more and more he gets jealous of, of Jason Schwartzman. And so great love story. 
I didn't mention how great the soundtracks are, but this is when I first noticed how great Wes Anderson's soundtracks are. It, be, it beats Tarantino's soundtracks all day long, in my opinion. And mm. and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but choosing between this and my next choice, it's like choosing between your children, some of these, these picks. And um, it was real hard. So Rushmore is my number four. That's not even an insult. I, I, love, all, I love that film. Um... Do, do, do. Let's go Suzanne next. Suzanne, what's your number three Frankenheimer film? Pretty sure it's oh, me. This one's pretty easy. I'm, I'm shuffling it up, man. I'm just trying. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yep. Prophecy. I think this was my. I started really getting into eco terror. Man, bear pig. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest sleeping <laughs> bag kill like ever. One of the first movies I saw that kind of got me into that genre. Robert Foxworth is his like manliest bearded most awesome in this and yeah you, know, you learn you get a little science in it you learn that mercury is heavier than water so it's not as easy to detect mm -hmm. then you have this absolutely heartbreaking you know mutated bear who they kill its cub and well she decides to wipe their miserable asses out yeah. and i can't say as i blame her <laughs> so yeah this was kind of the one that got me got me into eco terror so prophecy for the win i love it I love that sleeping bag kill. It's the greatest. It is thing one ever. of my favorites. Oh my god! If I ever <laughs> have to do a so top good. five favorite kills, the sleeping bag kill is at least in a number three. Yeah, for sure. Fucking awesome. I I do shuffle past the part with the the dying mutant fish on land part because it gets really. It's kind of sad for me, you know. Oh, it's, uh... it, it is. There are. It, it is sad because there is a grain of truth to it. Yeah, and plus they cast Amaro Asante as a Native American, which oh, is yeah. Oh, yeah. That was kind of your comic relief with some of the heavy subject matter. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Amaro Asante, you're not a Native American. What the hell are you doing in this movie? <laughs> like, did you know, uh, well, he's a Spanish actor, you know, anybody can play Native American. Ask Burt Reynolds in Navajo Joe. Okay? And Georgie <laughs> Scott. Georgie Scott in The Firestarter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey how are you turn it off no it's okay uh that's a different movie that's a <laughs> hardcore people watch that movie that'll make it sad jerry herring what's your what's your number three sir uh this movie is often mostly talked about for the special effects but i think the story is actually really good and it kind of digs into uh, what does family really mean when you just meet for the first time? War of the Gargantuas. Nice. Uh, the special effects of this, in this movie is amazing. That's mostly what's talked about nowadays. But I actually really do like Russ Tamblin in the movie. I really do like the story that goes on through it. Uh, if you, you find out you have a brother uh, and he's a big hairy monster like you... Are you willing to save him even though he's eating people and you're a vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> like, it hits the hard questions. What is stronger? Blood or vegan water? <laughs> oh, and, the answer yeah. is lava. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. True. Uh, but yeah, so War of the Gargantuas, uh, watch it for more than just the special effects. Really think about the story and, and how... Sanda, you know, really takes on everything that happens to him in the span of like two days after he's been escaped and living in the mountains for a fucking decade. <laughs> yeah, I've watched I've watched it recently. And by the way, the only thing stronger than the vegan is the vegan's anus because, you know, goddamn. But uh, <laughs> I, it's like it's, it's guys in suits. So it's, it's right there. I'm with that, Jerry. I, I love that to death, man. So it's uh, with, with giant, you know, giant, you know, fighting scenes, you know. Usually, you know, no, no offense to the big green green guy, big red guy, big red sp spiny guy, Godzilla or any of them. You know, you know, you didn't get that kind of mobility out of the monsters as you do in that movie. And I kind of got to love it. That were the gargantuas, man. Yeah, you really yeah. do. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Cameron Scott, number three, sir. Ooh, number three. Uh, big Trouble Little China. It's got to be in the top five. If you're, a, if you're a Carpenter fan and it's not in your top five, I'd. I, I don't know what I got to say to you. It's, you know, it's probably as 
the most controversial film he's got because it was such a, a you know a box office bomb when it came out. But it seems like, at least to me, uh, not just myself, it's it's almost universally loved. Almost everybody I talk to loves this movie. They love the humor of it, the action of it. And Kurt Russell is just, um, <laughs> he's at his best in it. Uh, well, uh, in his comedic best. I mean, because the Jack Burton character is just great. And there's a bunch of great one-liners. I love the, the mixture of action, the humor, the kung fu. Uh, on a side note, I got to meet James Hong, who uh, played Lo Pan a couple Amazing of years guy. ago. Yeah, yeah. He uh, uh, he did a little dance for us on video. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, they had, they had a Q&A with, uh, with two out of the three uh, elements were there, and Lo Pan was there, and they did a recreation of some things. So, uh, yeah, it's a big thing for me. Uh, but Big Trouble Little China, it's it's a cl- it's a classic and they should definitely stay away from remaking it cuz i hear they're doing their the rock or somebody is trying to oh, God, do a man. remake of that and it just needs to never happen um, it's not but, a remake it's a, it's a ex- ex- it's not, extension it's it's, a, it's like a sequel in a way and uh, no i i wouldn't put it past Kurt Russell to show up to uh, Suzanne i wouldn't put no, it past him he's no, not playing no, jack no, burton no, Suzanne no, no. Suzanne <laughs> open i was Suzanne on this one Suzanne. well <laughs> Were, were you in Indy uh, for for Horror Hound for that that show, Cameron? Yeah, yeah. We we missed each other then because I was at that show too for about three hours or so. <laughs> yeah, I was only there for a couple hours my, myself in one day. And uh, but yeah, big trouble, little China man. It's hard Greatest to not. Theme song ever. It is. Huh? Greatest theme song ever. <laughs> life, where oh. I think me and my friends had conversations in Big Trouble Little China speak. <laughs> and I'm one of English. My, another one of my friends actually has uh, the tattoo. Has a tattoo that has Meow Yin and uh, Gracie Law all dressed up in the wedding garb, tattooed on his arm. Nice, nice, fucking uh, oh good stuff. And big, uh, yeah, I, that's that's a very nostalgic movie for me. That one, just Victor Wong too in that movie with his like lazy eye. It's great. <laughs> oh, big Shen. <laughs> I love Egg. Awesome. Uh, I, I love the opening. The opening of that movie when he's just the guy is just like not believing him when there's magic. He's just like, <sighs> yeah. so he's shit. <laughs> <laughs> now look at me in the eye, one of them, and I'll tell you a story. Hell yeah! <laughs> you see the difference between him and Rob Zombie is that he knows it's an homage to shit that he likes. He just all right to say, "Hey, this is mine, kids." You know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm glad none of you guys pick Rob Zombie. Thank you for that, guys. You know, I like Rob <laughs> Zombie, but I don't think I can do a top. No, five. I can do a top five. I I couldn't. I don't. Yeah, I can do a top five. I, I, I hate his solo stuff. I hate his. I definitely don't care for his movies. I liked him when he was with White Zombie, and his cunt bag of a wife was not there. Damn. She is the Yoko <laughs> of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree. Oh, oh. All I picture now is baby shaking her ass in the frame right here, you know, <laughs> right here. And I can't uh, get mad at that. Then all we got out of that was Power Man Five Thousand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is one. It's like my worlds collide. Oh my gosh! Uh, it's 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 Derek's turn. Number three, Tony Scott film, sir. Uh, my number three is, of course, one word title: Revenge, starring the uh, the great Kevin Costner. Uh, yeah, I love this. this is one of my favorite Costner movies too. Uh, Kevin Costner plays like a Navy pilot, goes and visits his old friend, played by the legendary Anthony Quinn, and then starts fucking Anthony Quinn's wife, played by Madeline Stowe. Well, one thing leads to another. Yeah, they, they, they think they're safe. They go up to a nice little secluded cabin in the woods with their dog. Anthony Quinn just comes with a bunch of goons and beats the living fucking shit out of Kevin Costner, slashes Madeline Stowe's face and butcher inside a whorehouse and gets her addicted to heroin, leaves Kevin Costner for dead. They kill the dog, which is like, that's the most shocking scene ever because the way it's just filmed. And uh, pretty much is Kevin Costner's journey to get revenge on Anthony Quinn, who got re- It's kind of like a 
revenge story inside of a revenge story and that's it and you meet some scummy character actors along the way like michael gambin plays like a heroin addict in it fucking uh, miguel ferrer and john Leguizamo play scouters in it and they're all like weird looking and you know it has like that grimy dirty feel to it that i like and you know it ends very unhappy it's a very unhappy settled in film but it's mesmerizing to look at it because you're following a bunch of dirty people. Even uh, Tarantino himself, when uh, a certain movie that I will talk about maybe later was being made, he was happy that Tony Scott was going to be directing that movie because of this movie and the aspects of the characters and how the characters dwell. And uh, yeah, there's actually two cuts to this movie. I actually do prefer the director's cut. It's a little bit more tighter. Uh, and story wise, it gets down to the nitty gritty in points. Like, I think it cuts like maybe like 20 minutes or 15 minutes out of it, from what I remember from the original cut of the movie that was in theaters. Uh, but yeah, it's a really fucking, if you like revenge movies, revenge. Fucking, it's dirty and grimy. I love it. <laughs> I completely forgot Tony Scott directed that because I remember watching that guy at VHS rental days and. I just remember wanting to take a shower after because I felt unclean. Yeah. It, it gets under your skin, some of that stuff, especially uh, the Madeline Stone stuff in that movie. Holy fuck. That's fucking brutal. Apparently, right. I've never heard of Tony Scott because I have not seen a single movie you've named. But it really? also seems like a lot of action movies, which would explain why I haven't seen them. Because Jerry hates action. Bingo! There's a show about that, I think. Jerry hates action, I think, you know. Yeah, that's how I'm just going to have put you up now. Jerry hates action herring. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Understandable. Yep. Yeah, my number three Wes Anderson picture is uh, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. There's a lot of Bill Murray in this list, guys, because he's in a lot of his movies. Hell, yeah. But, um, Bill Murray plays like a Jacques Cousteau-type character who has a, a team of people known as Team Zissou who I'm so upset I didn't get a pair of those shoes when they came out. That was some, some, some Z, Steve Zissou kicks. Um, leads him to, to go find a, a jaguar shark who killed his his um, his partner um, when they tried to tried to <laughs> capture. Uh, well, yeah. not capture. They're not that kind of people. But uh, he made his mission for his part two of this film to go destroy the jaguar shark and take his crew with him. Great cast character, this one. Um I love Willem Dafoe in this movie. So oh, much. he's so good. <laughs> oh, he so is fucking great. Good. He's like he's like upset because um, the whole thrill out of the movie is that Owen Wilson plays Steve Zissou's long lost son, or is he? He comes to visit him. He comes to become a crew member, and he's like so kind of sexually jealous that this guy's hanging out with Steve so much, <laughs> and it's just awkward. And uh, say you, George, who's a Portuguese singer and guitar player, doing those great Portuguese Bowie covers in this movie. Oh, that is my favorite part of the movie, to be honest with you. Yeah. Oh, what else? Um, great use of uh, Devo's gut feeling and Iggy P- uh, and the Stooges' uh, oh. search for the uh, seek and destroy. Um, again, I think Mark Mothersbaugh did many scores for. For Wes Anderson films, so it's not a surprise mm-hmm. that Devo makes an appearance on the soundtrack. I'm sure he just yeah. gave it to him, and that's that. It works so well. And you got the Gold Bloom. The the Gold Bloom man. Bloom. See, I'll give a hit. The, the Grand Budapest Hotel is not on this list, this list, but I think that's Gold Bloom's finest uh, performance in a in a Wes Anderson movie is Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, I, I um, think my favorite part of the Wes Anderson movies. I love his soundtracks. I mean, I always go and find something new every time I watch one. That's good, man. That's uh-huh. a that's the point. Num- Jerry Herring, number two, Honda film. Uh, th- the next two movies are actually in my top ten movies of all time. Uh, this movie is one of the greatest examples of paranoia affecting human nature ever. And it's basically a horror version of Gilligan's Island that came out before Gilligan's Island. Matango. Oh, I don't know this film. I could not say enough about this movie. Basically, uh, some people that are a little bit higher society in Japanese life uh, 
go on a day trip and a storm catches them and crashes them on this island where there seems to be very little animal life and they find this giant ship that's crashed there and when they get in there they realize everything's covered with like fungus and then they find out that uh the big the thing you can eat on the island pretty much is mushrooms but apparently they're deadly and they will maybe turn you into a mushroom and when this came out in america it was released as attack of the mushroom people but uh matango is a far more fitting name and it truly does take uh, what I'm sure we'll hear uh, later on Cameron's list. It takes a lot of the same paranoia elements you have in the thing. And it did it uh, 20 years beforehand. And it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, I, I know Derek will back me up on this. Yeah, it's pretty fucking rad. It's actually... Uh... What's the short story it's based off of Jerry again? I, um, I fuck. I, I don't know off the top of my head either. Uh, the, the, the author is William Hodgson. Yeah, who was like one of Lovecraft's influences. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I, I, yeah. Oh. Lovecraft sucks Hodgson's penis as much as possible. <laughs> he. You put you put hot you put hots in there and Lovecraft is like come on I'm wearing my Lovecraft t-shirt today go light well it's I mean I hey if you're a true fan of Lovecraft that's all good name is Cat <laughs> he's waiting yeah, Suzanne name is Cat can't, yeah. can't do that <laughs> um, well I can tell you his psychosis I can tell you about his family I can tell you about damn near everything but to be honest. Never even asked what his cat's name or even looked up what his cat's name was. It's I've racist. Enough, I'm juggling 20 cat's names in my head right now for me and my it's, friends. It's racist, much like he was. Um, well, of course it is. Well, <laughs> oh, it, he's racist and sexist. Yeah. Uh, what do you about him? It's based on Voice in the Night by William Hodgson. Uh, that was the story. But uh, this is a film I highly recommend. Even the English dub is pretty good. They only change like one thing at the ending and it's not that big of a deal though i do like the japanese ending better uh yeah. but oh man if you if you want island horror or you want paranoia horror or you just really want to know what would happen if gilligan's island was a horror movie matango it's for matango, you Matango, yeah i i can't wait to watch this now i've never seen it that sounds I like a two drink menu chopped up version of the mushroom <laughs> people but I just, I, I'm definitely going to have to go and watch this movie really soon now. Thanks, Jerry. Not a problem. Uh, it used to have a version on Amazon Prime, but I think it was, uh, yeah, it is. But I don't, If it might be the slightly cut down Attack of the Mushroom People. What you want is the full Matango. Yeah, because I've seen the Mushroom People one and it's just, like I said, cut to shits. And I, I really don't know who cut that version <clears throat> together, but they should be murdered. Probably well, fucking AIP. Was it AIP? Yeah, prob- Might have been. My favorite I don't thing know. is the mushroom people's fucking laugh. <laughs> oh my god, it's so <laughs> creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Cameron's got number two Carpenter film. Uh, my number two Carpenter film, Jerry already uh, outed me on that one. It's The Thing. Uh, I, I love it for the same reason I, I believe he loves Matango it is the paranoia aspect of it. Uh, I just uh, I love everything about the movie. Once again, the, the soundtrack is great. Uh, it's Carpenter at his most refined as a director. I think it's perfect. It's a shame that it wasn't appreciated when it first came out, but it's obviously gained, you know, a uh, a massive cult status uh, in recent years, but it's great. I mean, the, the effects, good God almighty, man, the effects in that movie are just amazing. I, I don't, I, I implore you to go out and find a movie with better practical effects. Really? In my opinion, there is none. And that, that movie scared the shit out of me in 1981. I was five years old and watching that. And, you know, the, some of the transformation scenes, I mean, you know, 
the story is is very simplistic. It's just about an alien kind of being that acts as a virus, which is kind of relevant today, I guess. It just basically what the thing is is a a, a virus that you know that infects its hosts and replicates them perfectly. And I don't. I can't think of anything that's more scary than that. And being in a room, like we were all five in a room together. And it's like, which, which one of us is the thing? You know, yeah. you don't know. And uh, there's some great one-liners and some great scenes. The character actors. I mean, Wilford Brimley is. <laughs> my father used to do an impersonation as Blair. And he, whenever he would get mad, he would just be like, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm okay <laughs> now. Like, <laughs> can I come back inside? Yeah, can, can I come back, back inside? inside? <laughs> when, when, when Brimley is the thing, you know, spoilers, jams his fingers in that guy's mouth towards the back end of that movie. I like, I start freaking out, man. It's like, oh, it's like some society. Him. She's like, <laughs> yeah. and just drags him by his face. You know, it's just kind of dragging him like it ain't no big thing. Like he's carrying a bag of groceries in the house. <laughs> but uh, you know, everybody's great in it. Wilford Brimley's great. Richard Mauser's really uh, good in it. Keith David's amazing. You know, it's. Uh, it's one of the perfect examples of, of tension and paranoia. Am I going to stay in this fucking couch all winter? <laughs> oh, the, one of the best lines couch. ever. <laughs> one of the best scenes ever. That, that, that's such a realistic reaction to that. Yeah. To I'm this fucking thing. couch! You know, that, that moment of calmness before he just explodes and is this... Yeah, it's great. Oh, you mm-hmm. can see the veins popping out. Yeah, the thing... <laughs> is one of the reasons I hate remakes because they can be done properly. Uh And Carpenter's The Thing actually followed the story better than The Thing from Another Planet. Did I just hear Suzanne say she likes a remake or just did I see this in my ear? In Suzanne's defense, John Carpenter's The Thing really is more of a readaptation and not a remake considering she all the source material closer. Now, with saying that, Suzanne did tell me that she loves the Suspiria remake, and <laughs> she is really looking forward to seeing uh, the remake of Inferno. Of, uh, of Inferno that's <laughs> coming soon. Well, if they remake Mother of Tears, if they remake Mother of Tears, that could only improve things with that. If they burn every copy of Mother of Tears, it would improve the movie greatly. Yeah. I don't know. That Asian chick was pretty hot in it. <laughs> uh, my, my favorite thing in Mother of Tears off the side note is when uh, CGI Daria Nickelode gets stuck into that giant CGI PlayStation 2 hole that comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's so horrible. So I, I literally, when I watched that movie, because I pre-ordered it, it was supposed to be, I made a deal with them, just make sure it's on my doorstep the day of release. I'm like, okay, no problem. I, th- I think I spent the entire time watching the movie like this. <laughs> she, she has that similar rea- reaction to the entire movie. Similar reactions to the Meg. She was like a child squirming on a couch. Like, they want to get a haircut or something, you know? A Megalodon. You know, a Megalodon. All right, don't get me started on that rant. Okay, yeah, that's fine. You and me both. John <laughs> Carpenter's a thing. <laughs> Amazing movie. It's my favorite Carpenter movie. It's uh, in my top ten favorite horror movies of all time. Mine too. Uh, I think it's my number three, uh, yeah, if I remember it's correctly. It's damn near perfection. It really is. Yeah, there, there is. You can't find any fault whatsoever with it. I love this movie, and you could not have picked a better movie. I mean, hey, obviously... He could have, because whatever's in his number one should have been in number two. Oh, I know. Well, we'll, the we'll thing should have been in number one. Really but... excited to find oh, it was, it was hard. It, it, was, it was hard coming up with the top five for this, man. And when it, I'm watching it, the like thing, a I'm also choice. hard. If, if it's what I think it is, I have mad respect for you, Cameron, okay? I'm just throwing it out there. You it's not you... Starman, Gary. It's, I know it's not Starman. I'm thinking of another movie. <laughs> it's Ghost of oh. Mars, yo. <laughs> Ice Cube. <laughs> now, I'm going to give a spoiler here. A little spoiler ahead of time. It is definitely not Ghost of Mars. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, Who's next? Derek's next, right, Derek? Number yeah, two, Tony yeah. Scott yeah. film. No, number two is Tony Scott. Uh... Here's a movie Jerry might have heard of called The Hunger. Heard of it, never seen it. Fucking awesome. David Bowie, Catherine Deneau, and Susan Sarandon. Great fucking opening scene with Baja's Bella Lagosi's Dead playing. 
in the nightclub and you know they're just recruiting their next victims of prey and uh yeah great stylistic this is like one of his first movies too and it's just very stylistic you could sell like the style that he would bring to other movies in the future and uh just gotta mention the amazing lesbian sex scene between Catherine Anu and Susan Sarandon. You you can't not talk about this movie without uh, <laughs> even Gary's like. <laughs> Picture it. You know, it. Sicily, nineteen sixteen. <laughs> Get ass, okay? Hell yeah! And uh, some cool makeup effects later with like a Agent David Bowie and then some. Uh, spoiler alert, there's some other zombie old dudes that come later. It's pretty fucking rad. <laughs> and you got like a little Dan Hedaya in there as the cop. <laughs> yeah, I love The Hunger. It's fucking awesome. And you got like a young Willem Dafoe in one of his early roles too is like one of the punks. Good shit. I have Creepy no ending on that one. Creepy recently, ending. And I really need to go and revisit it because I have to admit, as much of a freak as Whitley Stryber is, I really like the book. Yeah, the book's pretty good. I read the book, like, uh, you know, I, I usually just separate them. And, like, you, you have to in some aspects with movies. Like, even Wolfen, I like the movie Wolfen, and, you know, the book's completely different, too. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Whitley Stryber. He's a fucking freak. I know. that You have to be a freak to have to be played by Christopher Walken. I got abducted <laughs> by aliens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking forgot about communion. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, Hunger, awesome movie, though. My uh, number two, and if you know what this is, you know my number one is Moonrise Kingdom um, is, a, again, one of, one of his later films. It involves uh, young love and them running away together. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless romantic, so I like love films like this. And visually amazing. Um, Great stuff with with um these boys are former scouts of the scout troop is maniacally after them along with the parents of the kids and it's just a fun soundtrack's fun narrated by Bob Balaban telling you about nature and shit I'm 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 all for this movie a hundred percent and again kicking it with the soundtrack again you know Kalija is a wonderful song they throw in this film um so, so many good things and uh. Man, Bill Murray says it all. I'm gonna go chop down a tree. And you fucking believe that shit, okay? You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's it's hard to explain everything about it without giving everything away. But there's it's a lot of little nuances in the in the picture in in the picture in the movie. <clears throat> to make you want to watch it a couple times so you catch everything. And um, it's a favorite. This is why it's my number two. And um, Ronda War. Numero uno's on our number ones. Uh, I'm excited. You, excited you here. forgot me. I forgot you, Suzanne. I'm sorry, Suzanne. <laughs> I'm still new with this. See, there's five of us. I got to moderate this shit, right? <laughs> That's well, what well, happens well, when you mix things up. Before, before you go, before you go, Suzanne, I got to mention something about Moonrise Kingdom. Also, one of the better later day Bruce Willis performances in the movie. Yes. He still gives, really a shit. He gives a it shit is, here. He does. It is a really endearing movie, and it hits all the feels. I really like it too, and don't tell anybody. I'm going to lose street cred. And no, and won't. I gotta say, I, I Moose uh, uh, Moon Rice Kingdom is my favorite Chinese buffet. I didn't even know they made a movie about it. Man, that sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Moon Rice platter, please, with extra duck yeah. sauce. Yeah. Well, it beats the moons over my hammy. Oh, yeah, well, that's nasty. Yeah, they only it, taste. They only taste good when you're really, really drunk, Suzanne. <laughs> I've, I've never been I, that drunk before. It really does. It is a religious experience when you're drunk as fuck. Last time I went to Denny's, they brought me a plate of pancakes. Because all I wanted was all you could eat pancakes. I'm a fucking fat ass, and I wanted pancakes. And I let it sit there as I ate my grits, and the butter did not melt. Yeah. Which, meant, which meant they sent me cold pancakes at a fucking pancake house. Never <laughs> going back again, you know. Unforgivable. Bad oh bad. Now, Suzanne... What is your number two John Frankenheimer pick? It is a little film called Seconds. Oh. And here it is. I was so excited when Criterion released a copy of it because I couldn't fucking find one to save my life. It is basically about a guy um, has a mysterious visitor. He's unhappy with his life. 
and he gets an opportunity to completely start over. They fake his death. He goes and under extreme plastic surgeries and starts a new life as a younger man played by Rock Hudson, just fucking amazing. And he starts to, I guess, miss his old life. It's There are scenes in this movie that are so harrowing and it's sad. It's depressing. It's one of my favorite movies. This is in my top 10 of all time ever. Because you will not walk away from this movie feeling good. And mm-hmm. that would be one of my favorite things. One of the darkest endings ever to a movie. Oh, it is. It's terrible. And you just feel gutted when it's over. And uh, Rock Hudson's performance is like, you know, when you talk about great performances, you never hear Rock Hudson in seconds because it's because he wasn't outed at the time, I don't think. And, you know, it was like yeah, he was you know, still heavily closeted. Yeah. And you could tell like there was maybe like something in there when, you know, because he's playing somebody's outsider inside somebody else's shoes. And he brings that to that performance, which I really dig. And uh, yeah, it's it's a very like Twilight Zone episode movie. Oh, yes. I mean, and, the scene where he goes and basically wants to visit his wife and maybe uh, check out the paintings to see. Actually, pretty much, completely and totally, like, well, he's gone. I'm moving on. Nothing, no feeling, no emotion, and he it just it's devastating to him, and he just can't seem to sink into this new life. Yeah, and you know it's just scary, like like uh, you know the whole aspect when he snaps at the party, and then fucking everyone's in on it when you know discovers it. You know, it, it's crazy in that aspect too. Like it's like a formed community, but they're being forced to be a formed community in that sense. You know, it's kind of like that consumerism, communist faction act that was big during that time period too. Oh, yeah. it, it's very scary in that aspect. And it's just—it's a theme that shows up periodically throughout a lot of Frankenheimer's work. Yeah, it's—I think it's a masterpiece, in my opinion. I uh, like a. Oh, I know I, it I, is. I, I recommend that film to everyone, and you know, I, I hear good things when I hear people that actually have checked it out, and it's—it's it's a stellar movie and hypnotic score by Jerry Goldsmith too. Fucking. Oh, wow. and the book is just as good. I mean, the two complement each other. I haven't read the book. I have to check that out. Oh, it's, um, you got a Kindle? It's on Kindle. I'll check it out. Good stuff, Suzanne. Thanks, Eric. Cool. Jerry, number one on the film, sir. Uh, no surprise here. And I knew it wasn't going to be a surprise, so I didn't care if it was number one. <laughs> Everyone knew it was coming. Gojira, the original, uh, Godzilla film. Gojira is important, not only because it launched a uh, a whole specific genre in Japanese cinema, but it was a way for Shiro Honda to kind of get his message out from what he saw while he was in the war, what he saw as a POW when he came home and went through Hiroshima and saw the wreckage. It was a movie where he could really have a message to talk to and it's important because as a director he did not come to gojira as oh it's just a big monster movie this is dumb no he came to it dead serious and gave us one of the greatest movies ever made uh till this day it holds up the cinematography is good the script is so well written the characters are so well done the special effects by Eiji Tsuburaya are amazing. The score by Akira Ifukube is fucking mwah, breathtaking. Uh, this was just a, a perfect time. And it was, you know, being made at the same time as Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. And these two films were the most expensive films Toho had ever made. And they also made the most money for Toho ever. Uh, so... It's just a gorgeous movie. I know a lot of people have seen the Godzilla King of the Monsters uh, Americanized cut. Um, starring Raymond Burr. Yeah, starring Raymond Burr, which I love. I love that movie. But you need to go back and watch the original Japanese version because they cut out 
so much stuff, especially a lot of the nuclear war stuff. And it is a movie that holds up to this day to me, even though I know some people look at the special effects and kind of shit on that. But fuck you. Yeah, fuck they're amazing. Yeah. Who needs that uh, kind of negativity in their life? Exactly. You get out of here. We don't need you. This is a kaiju world, and this is where we live at. And, uh, you know, the Americanized Godzilla King of the Monsters changed my life because it was the first Godzilla movie I saw. And since then, I- I've got just shelves on shelves of Godzilla figures and Godzilla movies. I do a Godzilla podcast. I I love Godzilla, and thank you, Ashiro Honda, for doing that for me. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Now, was it a propaganda thing why they cut the film for for America? Is no, actually, no. Uh, now, for the longest time, uh, a lot of <laughs> these historians who tried to write about Godzilla movies and failed at it and spread myths like, oh, Godzilla won in the Japanese version of King Kong versus Godzilla, while King Kong won in the American version. No, you're wrong. Shut up. Uh, the people who did it, they they said, we didn't cut it out. Because of that, we had to cut stuff to put Raymond Burr in there. That's how yeah. that works. He has to be in there. Um, so, no. Like, obviously, when it came to cutting, it was easy choice to go, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. But it wasn't like a propaganda propaganda political move. It's not like the Godzilla 1985 American cut. Now, that one Dr. Pepper propaganda. propaganda. Yep. <laughs> Oh, I do love Dr. Pepper, and I, I do love Godzilla, so I'm, I'm torn, man, I'm torn. <laughs> but uh, go right across the line here, Suzanne, number one, Frank and Herbert film. Oh, you guys knew this was coming. The Manchurian Candidate. Great movie. This... I did not know that was coming. I, I thought, <laughs> Ray, is, it, I, is it Reindeer Games? I thought that was going to be Reindeer Games. <laughs> I... <laughs> Gary, you're terrible. You are so terrible to me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I like realistic. reindeer games. It was dope when they finally let him play, and then Santa gave him his respect. <laughs> that was good times. <laughs> I don't know, know fuck what, you Ben Affleck from Boston, yo? Oh, Ben you Affleck, yo. No, this movie, um, I actually, it, my parents had been watching it for years, but, you know, I'm snot-nosed, asshole child. I'm like, I don't want to watch it. It's fucking white. Well, I kicked back and watched it, and it was one of the most jaw floor, oh my god, I can't believe what the fuck I'm seeing on screen. I'm, you've got Murder, She Wrote, Jessica Lansbury is basically the fucking heavy in this Angela movie. Lansbury. She is, oh my god, she is brutal in yeah. this movie. If, if you ever want a film to say Angela Lansbury is a real cunt. This is the film for you, okay? Yep. <laughs> and you've got this amazing performance by Frank Sinatra, who I, 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 I read too much. And Frank Sinatra is a complete and total asshole. No. I like his music. But this is where you truly see the fact that the man can actually act. He it's is good so he is. amazing in this. And then you have Lawrence Tierney is... Oh, God, uh... He's the kindest, nicest, most warm human being I've ever met in my life. And this platoon of guys that just, and I, I've said, I, I robotically do this to people, and one out of a hundred actually gets the reference. Oh, kindest, gentlest, warmest person I've ever met. Sorry, most people don't get it, but That's hey, cool. this is this is one of the most... In my opinion, this is also in my top 10 favorite movies of all time because I I can't even count how many times I've watched it. And each and every time, it still holds my attention from the second I hit play till the time the movie is over and I still feel sad at the end. We talk about remakes and reduxes. A uh, great redux of Manchurian Candidate is one of my favorite movies in the MCU, which is... Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it got it from somewhere, and this is it, people. So, although I do, I do love, uh, I do love the Winter Soldier. But it's in my top three of those movies, I guess. If Great, I I've seen the Winter there. Soldier. I don't have to watch the Manchurian Candidate. Oh, yes, you do, oh, Jerry. You do need to see it. 
Oh, no, he just yeah. said it's been remade. I'd rather watch the remake. No. No. Oh, don't watch the remake. Oh. Don't do it. I watched five about? minutes of it. I, I tried to do this as a hate watch so I could write a column about it. You know, and like, I got ten minutes Gary just like, said the remake Winter Soldier is great. No, there's a remake of the movie where Lee, Lee Schreiber is great in the movie. And that's all I have to say about that movie. <laughs> you know? Oh, well, I'll just watch Winter Soldier. Oh. <laughs> No, but this is also, once again, one of the great paranor- paranoia. You've got, you know, the this was Korean War, which no one really talked too much about mm-hmm. at the time. Or actually, it wasn't even a war. It was a conflict. Never was declared war. But there's so many different the political elements to it. And the uh, paranoia and my, uh, my favorite of all time, subliminals. Gotta love subliminals and brainwashing. It's got a little bit of everything, but the movie is just, to this day, it still holds up. I mean, I take a look outside my window and it's like, you know what? I can still relate to this. It's very classic. If you watch it, no other movie that I've ever mentioned. <laughs> watch The Manchurian Candidate if you've it, seen it. The Korean comic lasts like 12 years, Suzanne. Because if, no, Trapper, John, if Trapper John's okay. wrong, I don't be right, okay? It's, it's, uh... Yeah, but Colonel, it was never declared a war. Colonel Hawkeye says different um <laughs> radar says different it was longer than you say suzanne tell the people the truth come on suzanne <laughs> you know <laughs> my dad was in korea was he there for 12 years though uh, i think he was there for two man he wasn't there long enough then see for all the for all the laps you know oh my gosh <laughs> i'm gonna leave that alone that's a joke that went too long cameron Number one, you better say memoirs of the invisible man. Because yeah, we all oh, hear you say that. No, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. no absolutely not. No, nah, it's Escape from New York. Yeah, it's my yeah. favorite. I, I don't think there's a movie out there. It is not my number one favorite movie of all time. It is actually my number two of all time, but it's my favorite Carpenter flick. It has influenced my style of directing, my style of writing. Uh, when I was making my first feature film, all I did was listen to the Escape from New York soundtrack nice. or have the movie playing in the background. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I know you hear that first couple notes. Uh, there's something about the, uh, the Carpenter music for this. You hear that first few notes, you know, you know, mm. but uh, I, I was I was hoping for Prince of Darkness. But what would you replace for Prince of Darkness? I don't even know what you would. And just so I'm going to leave that one alone. You know, <laughs> that was actually uh, when I started making the list, I, I came up with like seven or eight. And I'm like, all right. And the last one that went was Prince of Darkness. It was it was it was a tough choice. It's like picking but, your children, man. It really is. You know, yeah, sometimes it's a real selfish you know? choice right there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it, it's great. It's uh, Kurt Russell's best role. Uh, Snake Plissken is great. I love the just his attitude of just not giving a fuck past uh, living another day. He just he doesn't care. He just wants to survive, you know. And the whole idea, you know, of the it's, it's what it was made in eighty one or released in eighty one, and it's supposed to be taking place in ninety seven. So uh, their version of night what ninety seven was like. I don't. I think they were just off by about twenty years because we're probably not that far from walling off Manhattan and making it an island. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think he was just off a couple of decades. It just took us a few more to get there. But you know, the whole idea of Manhattan Island being this, you know, fortified prison and everybody just being dumped off there, and somehow you know a terrorist outfit takes over Air Force One, and boom, the fucking president is there. And captive, and they got to send Snake in to get him. I, I love the idea. It's not really action. It's not really drama. It's not really sci-fi. It's a little bit, you know, of everything. And there's even some horrific elements in there when you got people's heads on sticks. You got people coming out of the ground, eating people. That, you know, taking uh, Kurt Russell's uh, then wife and dragging her down through the floor of a chock full of nut shop. <laughs> yeah. But it's got, uh, you know, and uh, Harry Dean Stanton and his brain is amazing. Isaac Hayes is great as the Duke. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, Duke of New York. Got fucking chandeliers on the car, man. I love it. That's oh, a yeah. ball yeah, right there. Driving a, ca- a Cadillac with fucking chandeliers dangling off the front. That's great. Uh, <laughs> That's my dream car. <laughs> they would know you coming down the <laughs> you were driving that ride. I love that Donald Pleasant is the president. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great. It, 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 he's 
Um, not quite hey, the number best. one. <laughs> And once again, he ends up losing his shit at the end of the movie. He's again, he's kind of like Loomis. He starts off all right, and then he just loses his friggin' mind by the end of it. Yo, hey, number one, you know, and just yeah. and, and I love that cop- <laughs> perfect shot too. By the way, you see that spraying fire. Yeah, just uh, spraying from the hip and manages to not hit Snake. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> but honorable mention. I mean, it's got the best ca- cast. It's better than the fucking Expendables cast. Harry Dean Stanton, uh, Ernest Borgnine. Yes, Borgie. Uh, Tom Atkins, who's severely underused, but, you know, the Atkins is in there. He doesn't fuck anybody's mother, but, you know. He, he <laughs> Lee does Van take... fucking Cleef, yo. <laughs> Lee, yeah. Oh, yeah, that I'll... was my next thing, because I love Lee Van Cleef in not in a friendly way. Well, there's yeah. there's that there's that scene where they're interacting for, you know, for, like, the only time, well, the second, the first time in the movie, in the very beginning, where it's like Lee Van Cleef talking to Lee Van Cleef. Because he's just doing an invitation of the whole time. <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly. So and it's the best line in, in any movie whatsoever. I don't give a fuck about your war or your president. And I'm not getting political. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a great line. It's a great movie. Like, you know, the thing with Carpenter that I always love is like, because he's a huge Western fan. This is pretty much just a Western inside of post-apocalyptic world. You right. can see these characters in a Western. Like uh, That's probably one of the main reasons why he wanted to cast like Lee Van Cleef and Ernest Borgnine, too. Because they're, you know, the wild bunch and fucking good, the bad, and the ugly. Why wouldn't you want to fucking cast those guys in your movie, <laughs> you know? And, you know, Snake is like that outlaw, anti-hero that you'd see in a lot of Western films. And... I love it. It's really great, and you know, uh, it's like a modern day spaghetti western. Uh, oh, it with is sci- with sci-fi elements in it. Yeah, exactly. Plus that giant wrestling match, and I don't know where. The, that's, <laughs> well, that's what my dad used to point out. My dad was big. He would go all the wrestling matches at the Coliseum in Chicago all the time, like that. And he pointed out to me as a young child who Ox Baker was, and Ox Baker fights Snake in this movie, and just a mammoth of a man, and. You give a guy with a bat with some, with some spikes in it, man. That motherfucker goes down. Is all I'm gonna say about that. It's a... <laughs> he went you almost down. The other two things, the other two best things about this movie, Adrian. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, well, both things, yeah, one and two. Just no, we haven't have to widen that out. <laughs> widen it out, yes. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's a perfect film for me. There, there's, I, I couldn't say a bad thing about it. Look for a YouTube argue, video. Man. Totally not uh, escape from New York related, but totally Ox Baker related. Ox Baker on the Price is Right, Right is priceless. Look, look for that YouTube video. Okay, you know, <laughs> I'm writing it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. Mm. Um, mm. Derek B. Number one Tony Scott film. I kind of uh, know what it is already. I think. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's, uh, of course, uh, the film that's written by Quentin Tarantino, known as True Romance. Yeah. Yeah, fucking fantastic <clears throat> movie. Christian Slater, one of his best roles. Uh, I love, like, that whole opening segue where he's just talking to that girl that he meets and, like, you want to go see a Sonny Chiba th- double feature, yo? <laughs> yeah. You know, I it's so quotable. Was- <laughs> that's, yeah. that's true love right there that's sunny cheap double feature <laughs> yeah exactly and you know that's when he meets alabama and you know he's a big elvis fan and uh, it's great val kimmer plays fucking elvis in the movie and he talks to him in, like the bathroom like, yo man that's your girl now you gonna go look her go to the pimp <laughs> you know it was, it's fucking great and looking like, the pimp played by gary oldman drexel yes. fucking greatest it, it, that's why Gary Oldman is like one of the greatest character actors ever. Is you had to watch him in this movie, <laughs> where he plays a dude with like scars all over his face with dreadlocks, and he talks like, "Yo, you want an egg roll, motherfucker?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dude, that dude's a chameleon. He can become any character. Like the year before, it's the professional. I think How about Le- Leon, the professional. I think the year after, the year after that is the Fifth Element. Just look at those roles and just compare the three. You can't compare the three because it's just all over the place. You know, before yeah. that, Dracula. A Dracula, yeah. yeah. I think the weirdest movie I saw Gary Oldman in was this thing called Tiptoes, and the only reason I watched it was because I couldn't find the remote. It was called Tiptoes, and he played a dwarf. 
Yeah, with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Tony Collette. Oh, I gotta find this now. <laughs> it is. It is so T- tiptoes. Offensive, but you. It's like. It's like a car it's accident. You just pretty much you gotta rubberneck your way through the whole thing. Uh yeah, it's it's mm. definitely like my, my mom was watching that one time. I'm like, oh okay, I'll, this is when I go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Yeah, yeah, all star cast. Like, probably the most show stopping scene of all time is the scene between Dennis Hopper and Christopher Walken. Yes, it's yeah. like one oh of the god, that one is of all times. Tell the an, an unfortunate history of my people, the, the Sicilians. You know, <laughs> you're part eggplant. <laughs> I got a buddy of mine to this day that still tells me I'm part eggplant because I'm Sicilian. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one that gets away with it because he gets a reference, but you know anybody else does not get a pass. Yeah, they, they get. <laughs> and you know, but, and, and another scene that's fucking great in this movie too is the scene with James Gandolfini and Patricia Arquette. Yes. Yeah, that scene's so tense. Like S- spike heel through the foot, man. Straight through. Uh, so oh, many yeah. great characters, like Brad Pitt is the stoner character. There's so many great, like Sal Rubinek is the coked out producer. <laughs> Fucking so great. Even uh, uh, what's his name that played Balky? Uh, yes, Bronson Bronson Bronson. Bronson. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's great as the as the agent or whatever the hell he was. He's just coked out of his friggin' mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's mean, a who's who of actors. There's damn. I think it was well, the last blank, race, you, you know, you blank, you miss Samuel Chris Jackson. Chris Pannon, yeah, Samuel Jackson's only in the movie for like three seconds. He's like, I like him. I think it's blasted, you know. It's Chris Penn and Tom Sizemore as the two cops. <laughs> They're fucking great in the movie. Uh, well, I'm happy to announce that finally Derek mentioned a movie I've seen. <laughs> and it's my second favorite Christian Slater movie. What's your first? Uh, Oh, pump up the volume. Yeah. There is no greater Christian Slater character. There's no greater Christian Slater movie. It's pump up the volume. And if you think otherwise, <laughs> you're fucking wrong. Uh, no, no love for Gleam in the Cube. <laughs> oh, man, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Wow. And my second favorite Christian Slater movie, I'm sorry to say, is The Legend of Billie Jean. It's a good my third, movie. My, third favorite, well, my, my fourth or eighth favorite is. I don't know what it is. 3,000 Miles of Graceland. One day we'll cover it, Suzanne. One day, okay? Oh, I'm down. I, That's I, a I, I former love center that attack that episode. Oh, man, it's awesome. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta dig back on that one, see? <laughs> so uh, much to unpack in that movie. In the two hours and 25 minute runtime or something, you know? You know, it's just it's great when this ice tea just pops out of nowhere in that movie. <laughs> Upside down, spinning, <laughs> shooting Uzis for no reason, you know? Yeah! <laughs> Somebody gives uh, somebody gives Harry long acting jobs. We're, 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 we're tangenting, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> Speaking of Christian Slater movies, fucking uh, Broken Arrow with Howie Long, and he just oh, so great, it's so Arrow bad, but it's so like, good. Me and a couple of my friends, we were bored, and we had enough money to go to the, a theater. We couldn't go to a bar, but we could buy it. We could go um, to see a movie. I went to see Broken Arrow, and I want my time and my money back. Oh, shut up. I, I, I had 30 seconds with John Travolta, and I had to tell him that the, the, new, the new crop of kids in my house really loved the, that Grease movie, and then thank you for the John Woo stuff. Those are the two things that I said to him. And he's had the biggest smile on his fucking face, okay? You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's really weird. I thought he would last longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was generous. At least, at least he came, right, Jerry? You know? So, there's that. <laughs> There you go. Oh my gosh. My number one Wes Anderson film is not a surprise. It's the only appearance from Gene Hackman on this list, and that's the Royal Tenenbaums. Um, well, what can I say? Um, total Wes Anderson cast in there again. It's actually essentially Gene Hackman, who's the greatest, most wonderful, most generous asshole of all time in this movie. Yes, he is. <laughs> you want to talk some jive? I'll talk some jive. <laughs> The look on the look on Danny, Danny uh, Glover's face. Mm-hmm. You just call me Coltrane, you know? <laughs> you just call me Coltrane. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. 
It's been revoked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and once again, this is a Wes Anderson soundtrack where I discovered Nick Drake. Mm. So now I have all three of Nick Drake's albums. And when I feel really, really sad, I will listen to them so I can feel sadder. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the bomber. Well, Luke Wilson is just a sad character. Mar- Margo, fucking Jamaican people. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. The only roles I, I like her in is, is, is films like this, where she's just like a, a bitch, but you're like she's like repressed, so it, it, it's yeah. kind of justified because the whole through line of the film is that he's their adopted daughter, Margot Tenenbaum, and he keeps reminding her of that the whole time. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even even in her in her, in her adulthood, like to go to go to the the the, the you know, um the cemetery to go see the the wife and um. Ben Stiller's unfortunately dead wife. And he goes, I never thought she wanted to go. She wasn't your real mother, you know? Just reminding her in her adulthood that, yeah, you're not really a part of this family because you're adopted. And um, there's a line in the film that, that confused the fuck out of me because this is a scene that Bill Murray watched her having sex with all these men where he goes, you made, you, you, you made a cuckold of me or something? Or you, you cuckolded me? Now, I've watched pornography. I know what cuckolding means, okay? And... I would have to assume that he made her watch. She made him watch her, her having sex with these guys. So why is it such a surprise? You know, <laughs> which you you get. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But he was more upset that she smoked. Yes, he yeah. was very upset that she smoked. That was a big yeah. Um, best Owen Wilson role ever. Uh, uh, was it, uh, masculine induced Eli Cash. You know, um, what we're doing is we're presupposing that. What if he didn't win? He Custer didn't win. You know, come on, whatever he says. He's you know, a co-writer just, of this, right, Gary? I, he, I believe so. Yeah. yeah, great, greatest, um, greatest role of his. Oh, he was Ben great. Stiller. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Ben Stiller acting crazy. You know, and um, the matching sweatsuits and the Dalmatian. Yeah, the kids, the yeah. matching, yeah, the matching sweatsuits and the well, the Dalmatian, Dalmatian to come to the end. Buckley was a uh, a beagle. He got run over by by uh, but you like Cash at the end of the movie. Yeah. Poor Buckley. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, no, this is wonderful. And it, it's all through line together by this great role by Gene Hackman, who is this guy who's been estranged from his family for obvious reasons, claims that he's dying to get back at their lives. And then he, you think that he's lying about this. and But then again, he it's spoilers, he dies anyway. So he's been dying this whole time. So the fact that he's bullshitting but not bullshitting his family is what makes this movie work so well. And, you know, and Angelica Houston, I, I didn't mention, but you know what? Uh, a renewed a renewed love for Angelica Houston came years later after I saw The Witches, because The Witches just ruined Angelica Houston for a very long time. But uh, mm-hmm. she pr- she proves that she could be a hot older lady, especially in movies like this. And um, oh, she I plays great... Yeah, she plays a great um, matriarch of this film, Ethelene Tenenbaum, and... Real Tenenbaums, number one with a bullet. Um, go check it out. Go check out all these fucking movies. They're all, they're all, they're all good. Yeah, they are. I agree. I have. There's only one movie in all of your list that I have not seen, and that's Jerry's number two. And I've got to watch that. Uh, let's see. I've seen one on Gary's list, one on Derek's list. What was your five again, uh, Suzanne? Um. Black Sunday, uh, the, the Holcroft Covenant Prophecy with uh, Seconds and the Mentorian Candidate. Okay, none of your films and you all saw, of... You saw Prophecy, though, didn't you? Oh, Prophecy, yeah, yeah. That, I knew there was one on there. So one from everyone's filled, film list except for Cameron. I've seen everything on his list. <laughs> right on. And now for the the fun part. Uh, well, this 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 can go this can go either way, really, because you know if there's a you know somebody who made what well, I feel I love all of Wes Anderson's films just just a little bit, but a lot of them a little bit less than other ones. And I'll get into that, but you know, and this could be some really shitty stuff that you want to throw. Really, this is the, could be the lowest of the trashiest of the trash. It is your choice, really, Jerry Herring. What is your first of your bottom two of these films, um, man? I'm going to go with Space Amoeba, a.k.a. Yogg, Monster from Space. This is a movie where, like, it just felt it was like a director for a higher job. 
He didn't care what the script was. He didn't care about the special effects. He didn't care what the budget was. He was there to go action, cut, done. I'm going to go take a nap. You like the cuttlefish it, out. <laughs> you put the cuttlefish back in the put the guy in the cuttlefish suit. Make him fight the turtle. Um, it's just watching this on is Yog. Yeah, uh, it came out in America as Yog the monster from space. Uh, but it's just it's just while it's fun and entertaining, you can tell. As a director, he just didn't give a shit. And this was like the last kaiju movie he ever directed. After this, he was done. He went back to making his documentaries and working with Akira Kurosawa. He was yeah. he was done with the genre. He was over it, and it shows. Yeah, but uh, as we know, I already could guess what the next movie Jerry's going to talk about. And that movie makes Yagi look like a masterpiece. <laughs> You are right. Let's 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 run on through in this second. Jerry, okay, what's what's your second pick, man? <laughs> you know, Ishiro Honda once said that Godzilla becoming uh, too much for children was a bad thing. That uh, it loses its importance and its meaning when it's dancing and and talking to other monsters. Then, Mister Ishiro Honda, would you please explain to me? All monsters attack. Like, <laughs> explain to me why, if all that's bad, you gave me a talking, mutated fucking uh, Hershey donut frog <laughs> who's talking to fucking children that are fucking so zoned out that they're having dreams they're on Monster Island. Can you tell me why that is okay? But you're going to talk shit about your own movie, Invasion of Astro Monster. Just explain the thought process here. I know you're dead. I'll get in a Ouija board. We'll figure this out. We'll, we'll, we'll conversate. <laughs> um, this movie's awful. It is, uh, it is bad for children. You should not let them watch it. It is the only bad uh, Japanese Godzilla movie. Uh, like, Derek's right. Space, Space Amoeba... Is not that bad once you compare it to all monster tech because at least it's fucking entertaining. It doesn't have a kid running around going, eh, eh, eh. shut the fuck <laughs> up. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that kid. Derek, Derek oh, can you kid. can you please give everyone an example of what Manila sounds like in this movie? I can't fight Cabra, yo. He's so, he's so bigger than me. Godzilla says I should learn to fight my own battles. Fuck you! <laughs> it's just lazy because it's just all fucking stock footage too. Yeah, it's it's just bad. It's not entertaining. Even the human story of him getting stuck with uh, burglars. Fuck you! First of all, you stole that from an Ultra Q episode. You're not slick. Uh, I saw what you did. The Ultra Q episode. Diamond Tana. kick. <laughs> Diamond. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir, you know. Uh, and that episode was way better. And second of all, uh, you clearly show these kids who you're trying to teach to stand up to one another, bullying a full-grown adult who is just working and trying to do his job by painting this sign, and you show them just knocking him the fuck over, spilling his paint, all that shit. So, and then, uh, this movie's not really good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Jerry. About this the only movie worse than this movie is M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. <laughs> Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> no, once again, husband and I went to the theater to see The Village. Ten minutes into the movie, I'm like, Pat, it's <laughs> modern times. And he's like, I hate you. My husband told me he hated me. She ruins shit, man. See, she does that, you know? Ask her about, ask her about a megalodon. I don't know. Man. <laughs> that's, like when I, that's like when I saw the happening with my boy, Marky Ma. Hey, yo, don't go in that house, yo. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get shocked, kids. Hey, Marky Smart did one good movie. It was called Rockstar. Uh, <laughs> Boogie Nights? Yeah. Oh, well, Boogie Nights. Two good movies. Boogie Nights. Yeah. Renaissance Man. I'll throw that in the hat, you know? Uh, oh, the okay, movie. I guess I guess I should just retract my comment now. I think you should. 
plays a cop version of himself in Boston during the Boston uh, Marathon bombing. He I was good. That. I didn't need to watch that. Movie. I, I, I fucking forgot about the movie. <laughs> okay, I retract my Marky Mark statement. Yep. You hurt my feelings, Suzanne. I'm done with you, okay? I'm done with you. I retracted it because I realized that he's been in a, a bunch of movies I really like, but he's been in a lot of movies I really hate. Oh, the other guys? He was funny in that. Man. I've never seen the other guys. Oh, oh, it's it's added. You need to watch that shit, Suzanne. It's funny. You know. All right, I'll do that. I'm a peacock. You let me fly, Suzanne. Let me fly. Did you get that reference? Did you watch that movie? Arnold Palmer alert. Arnold Palmer alert. <laughs> Blow the neck. Shade. You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Gators, Suzanne. this better be wearing jimmies. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> Suzanne, bottom two freaking hyper joints. Oh, my God. Coming in at number two is Reindeer Games. <laughs> I really hate this movie. With a passion. It is a bunch of little weenies trying to act tough. And it was definitely Frankenheimer phoning it in. He was pretty much there for... Someone gave him money. He had a, a, a movie left on his contract. And Ben Affleck is the less, the least tough dude I could ever imagine. Well, the Suzanne, L- L- Lieutenant Dan kept his beard for this movie. He showed up in this movie. I'm Lieutenant Dan. How is Ben Affleck the least tough man? Do you know what he does to people in the back seat of a Volkswagen? I find him <laughs> and uh, kind of wonder bread. Hershey I, Highway, then. Hershey Highway. I don't. I hate this movie. It's just. It's. It, it's not my action movie. I don't like it. I hate Ben Affleck. That might be kind of the reason. But for me, the whole thing is founded. You don't have those beautiful sequences. You could have a boring-ass movie like the whole Croft Covenant, but the sequences are beautiful. This one is just, it's drab. It's oh, and the, reve- the reveal of the girlfriend is just annoying as all hell. Everybody in this movie is annoying oh. as all hell. Like, by the I, way, I've been in on it the whole time, you know. <laughs> I've been fucking Gary Sinise on the side when you were sleeping. <laughs> it is the biggest waste so of- bad. <laughs> Other than Ben Affleck, it's a waste of talent. Ben Affleck really is kind of in the sewer system of Hollywood for me. I just don't care for him. He's the bomb in Phantoms, yo. He is the bomb. In he Phantoms. is the bomb in Phantoms, yo. I like Ben Affleck. I like Fa- I liked Phantoms. I like the book. Shoot me. See, well, 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 where Ben Affleck, you know, destroys women's rectums, Marky Mark destroys Vietnamese shop owners. You know. <laughs> that's why. That's why I can't build the Wahlburgers there. So you know. Yeah, but the Wahlburgers, yo, they are right there, yo. And my number one, um, most awful. I mean, seriously, just. I already. I think I know what it is already. And it. it I don't know. It's like it starts with like uh, the island and ends in of Doctor Moreau. I make my mouth to the camp shoes. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Stanley oh. had no control. Richard Stanley had no control over this. Bell Kilmer and Marlon Brando came in and pretty much shit all over him. But he never asserted any sort of spine whatsoever. So they fired his ass. And they brought in Frankenheimer, who pretty much at that point was like, fuck it, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> And want, Marlon want, Brando want, oh. had his favorites, so characters got cut. And Bell Kelly was just kind of a cunt bag. I want to cross a wombat with a human woman. It'd be <laughs> beautiful, you know. Well, you, you. This movie from day one was a hot mess. And Frank and I are pretty much, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to go in. He's like, do this, do this, do this. I don't fucking care. You can tell. Throughout every scene of this movie, he does not care. And it's long, and it's terrible. And there's not... If you can name one redeeming scene in this movie, please tell me what it is, because I can't find it. Oh, I can't. The credits. The end credits. (laughs) Nope, I got one. All the scenes used in the documentary about how shitty the movie is. (laughs) Yeah, the Lost Souls, yeah. Mine is the leader. Seriously, this is a... This is straight up... I mean... I make jokes about hot messes and hot garbage, but this is this is a dumpster fucking fire. I mean, this is a dumpster fire of epic proportions. Would would you call it the meal of movies? 
<laughs> yeah, she better not, because then maybe she'll make a good soon I, I Island Dr. Monroe movies. commentary. <laughs> I, I need I to. Hate these two movies. There's a deleted scene where he says, Give me all the cannoli. And when I say all the cannoli, I mean some cannoli. I mean all the cannoli. I have a little version of me. I call him Mini Me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is better, see? <laughs> That's the best thing. The only good thing that came out of Island, Dr. Moreau, was the South Park shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, no, God. the documentary is fucking awesome. I have yet to see it. I need oh, to. so good. I was going to say something during the thing. We talked about the thing. The, the, the parodies of the thing make it all that much better, in my opinion. The South Park one, I yeah. think it was... For headlights or for cooties, I forget which episode it was, where Cartman's wearing the jacket and everything and has the fake beard. Yeah, and they do the blood test. Yes, they do the blood test for cooties. Yeah. (laughs) I think it was for for, to find out who had headlights. Yeah, this is one of those, yeah. yeah. My favorite one where they have that character is the one the Nambla one. Oh god, the The North American Marlon Brando lookalikes. Yes. That's, that's about as good as the Rob Reiner non-smoking episode, you know. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, but Cameron Scott is up next. Bottom two, John Carpenter Films. Oh, number two. I It pains me to almost even say this title, but Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Thank it you. pains me not because it, I, and I think anybody thinks it's good is because it, it it's fucking hardly even a movie. It, it's just, it, it, oh. Mm, um, the hate I have for this movie it, it it cemented the fact that I no longer like Chevy Chase and from about that point on it didn't matter if Chevy Chase did anything good I hated it it's, well, it's you, the, you, you, you watch it for Sam Neill if you watch it for anything but that's, a, that's what I was going to say if it has mm-hmm. any redeeming value he's a really good villain and he's he's the kind of actor who's always performance guaranteed I, mm-hmm. I, I like him in just about everything he, he, he does even if the movie is not that good, but it's just so bad. The comedy is not good from a technical standpoint. You know, it's, it's still a good film. It's well, well shot. The effects for the time in the early nineties were, were good, but it's just story-wise. The comedy is, is not good. The story is not good. Uh, I really don't like Harold Hanna in it. John Carpenter was addicted to basketball. Yeah. Addicted to basketball. Yeah. Basketball addiction. He didn't give a shit about anything. He just got so involved in watching basketball. I'm like, of all the random fucking shit I've ever read about John Carpenter, that is the most randomest, weirdest bit of information I've ever gotten. Yeah. But yeah, I can't say much more about the movie. It's it's just plain bad. It it, it has an interesting concept, but yeah, Memorable Invisible Man, number yeah. two. It's, and, it's just too bad. It's just too bad we never got that sequel, Memoirs of the Invisible Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank crumb on that one that we do not have any sequels. You see, uh, uh, this is the hard part because this could be many things. Like much like Wes Craven, he has a lot of holes to where he stuff you don't like in his career. So uh, lay it on his camera. What's your number one, man? Number one. I'm going to preface before I say the title. I'm going to say fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Village of the Damned. That movie can eat a bag of dirty leprosy dicks. I, I, and it's not because it's a remake, which I'm uh, a proponent of not liking remakes, but it's just bad. It's boring. It's a TV movie at best. It, I don't like Christopher Reeves. I like him as Superman, and that's about all I've ever liked him <laughs> as. Watch. But as an actor, I don't like Christopher Reeves. He just doesn't sell it for me. He's a lame leading man. Kirstie Alley is a doctor, as the doctor in the movie. That's just I don't know. I don't. Who the fuck thought that was good Ooh. casting? And, Whenever the, the the alien baby comes on screen in the, in the glass jar, I can't <laughs> stop laughing. It's, it's like <laughs> it's, it's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my goddamn life. You know, and, and it's God. It, and Mark Hamill's even a friggin' drag in this movie. Nobody's any good. It's it's so phoned in. It's it's paint by numbers. It's just oh, it's true. it's awful. Yeah, it's just you know the to, to me. I'm 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 a fan, but I'm a filmmaker too. And you know, a movie can be any number of a hundred 
thousand different things, but it better not be boring. And that movie is boring as watching paint dry while watching flies fuck. That's boring. <laughs> it's <laughs> just... <laughs> what the what the Kirstie Alley does in this movie she does so well is being Kirstie Alley because she's so drab as an actress. So her being like this emotionless, so how how are the children doing today? Are they? You know, works so well in this movie for me because she's just Kirstie Alley being a non-actress in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I wish Joe Black Flower was in the movie more. Man, he George Black Flower. He was in there for what, 30 seconds? He gets yeah. it bad though, bro. He gets it bad. Yeah, yeah, just, I, just like in uh, Escape from New York, one and done. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't hate this movie like you hate this movie, Cameron. I actually kind of dig it in a lot of parts. It's just I agree that it's not a good movie. I, I just like it more than Ghost of Mars, and I like it more than hmm, what's the, the, ward? The, the Ward? Yeah, the Ward. I hate the Ward. I think that I, it's. Kind of fifty fifty for me. Village of the Damned and the Ward, I think, are the two worst movies. And no more so for the Invisible Man. Those are the three most yeah. horrific atrocities of celluloid ever committed. Yeah, now, the yeah. one the one people shit on the most that I don't agree with at all because I have so much fucking fun with it is Escape from L.A. I have so much yeah. fun with I hate it. That movie too. Yeah. See, you, you, you kiss my butt, Suzanne, in, in the yeah. nicest way, I, I, you know? I do have problems I mean, with Ghosts of Mars, but at least it still feels like a Carpenter movie. It would yes. It's at least exciting. I mean, that soundtrack yeah. that drives you through it. Yeah. Here's my question. On your top five, why wasn't In the Mount of Madness on there? That It was... Uh... It was just a hard choice. When I was making the list, I, I started writing it, and I had seven or eight down there, and it, it was just hard to to to, to choose, really. You know, mm. Uh, mm. just for various reasons. If I had the, you know, if I could extend the list, I probably would have included Pr- Prince of Darkness and uh, In the Mouth of Madness. But then again, yeah. it's an, a, another hard decision to not include Christine. Yeah, I, know, yeah, I mean, he's got an incredible body of work. It's yeah. exactly he's my favorite director, which is why I, I, you know, he's why I chose to, you know, to do it. It, it was a hard. It was really hard. And in the mouth of madness deserves to be in there. You're right. Yeah, because my top two are the thing and in the mouth of madness. Yeah, I, I love uh, it in the mouth of madness. I, I'll, uh, I'll know. give you an answer that's gonna upset people because Lovecraft is hot garbage. Okay. Hot garbage. <laughs> well, I'm not a big Lovecraft fan, but In the Mouth of Madness is good. It doesn't seem to have the racism that Lovecraft has. There's no inappropriately named cats. Mm. You well, know. and it's not directly, you know, <coughs> off of Lovecraft stories. It's just little bits and pieces, and this, you know, it's it's a, it's its own thing. Yeah, it's Lovecraft inspired because anything that's cosmic horror is considered Lovecraft. I mean, yeah. I could name like several different stories that don't involve racism wrote that were <laughs> kind of threaded through. Do you read Sutter Kane? <laughs> I have. Do you read Sutter Kane? I, I have replicas of all the Sutter Kane books in the movie sitting on my shelf. What really? They made replicas of those? No, yeah, I had a guy that. custom make them on Reddit for me for a Halloween costume. I went as John Trent in the hospital gown with all the crosses. I remember that. Yeah, it was That's awesome. <laughs> now I truly understand your love for In the Mouth of Madness. <laughs> See, Charlton well, Heston, ju- let my books go. But you oh, know, my, I mean, uh, Carpenter has that great list. I mean, it, it, even Assault on Precinct Thirteen technically deserves it. That is one of my favorite list. movies of all time. Again, yeah. another westerny kind of film. You know, dun, dun, oh, it dun, is. Dun, it's dun. it's a western. It's, it's a real Bravo. Yeah. OK Corral, it's, which is a police station. It is in out. my top three. Favorite Carpenter scores is Assault I have on an Precinct interesting 13. story about uh, Assault on Precinct 13. And when I was uh, trying to get somebody to score my awesome, first feature man. film, I'm jealous, Barry. <laughs> oh, wow. Those are cool. <laughs> and like, legit. Anyway, I had a guy that was supposed to be making me a soundtrack. He sent me a, a test song and he's like, here's I can't what I can do. See those. He, sent me, he sent me the theme from Assault on Precinct 13. With like slightly changed it was but it was the entire theme song to assault and priest 13 i'm like what the fuck are you kidding here <laughs> that's that joke that's uh there was a uh that 70 episode where leo who's uh tommy Chong's brother shows up to redo the basement and he gets so yeah. stoned they just move all the, all the furniture three yeah. feet to the left this is your your basement three feet to the left you know <laughs> that was a great episode played by richard karn from um home improvement yeah <laughs> 
Oh my god. Derek B, boo boo. What's your what's your top what's your bottom two two of your uh, uh Tony Scott list? Um uh, you know I I will mention uh, I was I was gonna put Domino on this originally, but I actually kinda like that movie because I kind of like Mickey Rourke in that movie. He's kind of gets me through that one. It's pretty good, yeah. Plus also, isn't Kira one. Knightley topless in that movie? She is. Can't be I'm, that I'm bad. A... Yeah. You know, I thought she was a boy. <laughs> She's one sexy boy. <laughs> I'm I'm feminine enough. I'll take it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so pretty much I picked his last two movies, unfortunately, before he jumped off a bridge. Yeah, uh, Unstoppable, because... It's a fucking stupid title for a movie because the train ends up stopping. <laughs> well, it took a lot. It took to the end for it to stop, Derek. Okay, <laughs> that was a very yeah, tense train Derek, so. where things stop at they the should, end. I don't they know. They should call it, it, it semi stop. Yeah, it just, it just it just felt like a way too over exaggerated movie for about a a, a train that's off from course. It was just, the plot was stupid. It was just you know. It, <laughs> You know what they call it unstoppable? Because they couldn't call it the brakes may fail. They couldn't call it that, okay? <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Yeah, it, you know, Dan, it's a Denzel, like, phone in end movie, too, and Chris, Chris Pines, actually. You know, it's not like I, I don't hate it or anything. It, it's just a weaker movie for me, you know? Uh, I like his dad better in Bump it's, Rockers. It's like a movie out of time. This seems like a movie they should have made in the 70s, not the 2000s. Yeah, That's and plus they have all like, all these like giant cameos like Lou Temple's like chasing after the train. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What? If you if, if you would have told me, and I told me what year it came from, a movie about a train that has a bunch of chemicals on it that could possibly explode on impact, can't stop, I would say it's from the 70s. I would say it's from the 70s. You know, Not the early, two, late 2010s, yeah. or whatever, you know, <laughs> and of course the remake of Taking a Pelham One Two Three. Yeah, that's not good. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, it's I, it's just I a. I just love the original. I was kind of surprised when they made the remake. I'm like, <clears throat> I. You know, it's not like it's not well shot, or you know, you know, like, Denzel was under contract. I'm guessing, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's not. It has some good shots and shit. In it. It's just, it just feels like a. Boring remake. You there's know. there's no Walter Matthau or Robert Shaw in that movie. That's, yeah, that's you got your Travolta first mistake, and you know? fucking. Oh, I can't. Travolta Tag. and fucking uh, what's his name? Fucking Denzel. You know, I did like the the aspect where they actually, you know, like Denzel actually wore a different color coded. It was actually the opposite of what Walter Matthau wore in the original. Mm-hmm. I did kind of like that little fact, you know. And you get like, it's just so much side plots, like with James Gandolfini as the fucking mayor and shit too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just drawn and drawn out in that aspect. And, and it's long. It's a yeah. long movie. It is. It's way That's one of those movies that needed an editor so they could have cut out hey, 45 minutes. Here. <laughs> I was I was told <laughs> not to show you this. So I'm going to show you this. It's Sutter Kane books. Man, I thought, that is neat. So you had somebody on Reddit make those? Yes. They, they made all of them for me. <laughs> That's nice. Do you read Shutter Game? So are they so, just printed like are the pages just blank? Or? Yeah, yeah, the pages are just blank, but ha, I mean it's it's That's full still... book. Some of them don't have backs, some of them have backs. Um I think all, all but one of them have a back. Yeah, all but one of them have a back. For some reason, uh no one ever did the Hobbs End horror back, so it doesn't have it. That's for awesome. Since Pat's here, I'm gonna ask Pat a question. Uh-oh. Tell Suzanne to go 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 f off because you you got you got your time now. Okay, <laughs> first time on the podcast. What is your favorite bad movie director that Suzanne considers to be amazing? Of course, and what is their top five films for you? Oh God, you gotta be kidding! <laughs> Put you on the spot, Pat. You know. Oh wait, I'm saved. Sue's back. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, baby. There you go. Oh, I feel so cheated. My dick is very small right now because Pat is top five. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so you got no love for, for the cruise missile there, uh, Derek? For your for your Tony Scott list, you know? But I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm just throwing it out there, you know. Well, the like Top Gun and Day, uh, Days of Thunder. I grew up with them with my mom. You know, those are nostalgia. Wait, I why? Pe- yeah. This is the guy. The guy you chose is the guy who directed Top Gun. 
Yeah, it's not like one of my favorites. But and that wasn't in your your bottom two. I don't. Top hate Gun it. fucking sucks. I don't. That hate is it. One of the <laughs> fucking made. The only good character dies halfway through, and then you have you to listen to fucking whiny Tom Cruise and fucking Val Kilmer, who's put so much shit in his lips. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> And like the worst relationship I've ever fucking seen on camera. Top Gun is fucking awful. And Derek, I'm very upset with you that that was not in your bottom two. I don't hate it. It's a movie I grew up with my mom. You know, it's a nostalgic movie. I would rather play the Top Gun game for the NES blindfolded <laughs> and get hit with a taser every time I don't land the plane. Uh. Uh, we gotta make fucking Jerry watch Days of Thunder as Top Gun with NASCAR. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Jerry, no. Drive car. Why would I want to watch NASCAR? But it's got Robert Duvall in it, which makes it better. That, that, that is the episode of Jerry Hates Action, right, Jerry? Oh, an Days of episode. Thunder. No, I, did, uh, I have Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah, I did Top Gun. I talked shit about Top Gun. I talked shit about... Uh, uh, what's that uh, surfing Keanu Reeves? Uh, point Break. Point Break. Point break. I How talk- can you hate Point Break? Because that movie listen, sucks. Listen to yeah. the episode. Come on now. Like, you know. This is the crime of sports about the actual dude that did the actual crimes. Fucking amazing. But going off topic. You don't care about your dude bro comedy, you know. And that's all I'm saying about that one. But he's um, an interesting show idea. I'll get to that when we're done here. Might require homework. Uh, one thing that I would pick up Tony Scott's resume that wasn't mentioned is my love for Beverly Hills Cop Two because it's there. And, uh, yeah, I, I do love it. It was it was hard. It's it's not it's not top five material, of course, because the ones you picked are very good. It's just uh, I do love Beverly Hills Cop Two, and it's got uh, extra points for that Bob Seger song that I love so much too. You know that that that, <laughs> that baller yeah. op- that, that baller opening montage to that Bob Seger song. Shake down, yeah. you busted. It's good shit. <laughs> that down. saxophone in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's called Shake Down by Bob yes. I know these things. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> but did you know the Suspiria remake is really good? Yeah, if you like old people walking. <laughs> <laughs> I will say what that Suspiria is, is the worst I movie I ever saw. I think there are these clips. Wait, the, the original or remake? Oh, no, the, the remake. The remake is the worst movie I ever paid you... money to see in the theater. Oh, paid money for I, I was about to say, you know they remade The Fog, right? Like, there are worse oh, remakes. I, I, didn't, I didn't pay to that see The Fog. That movie is straight up the reason that remakes completely fucking suck in my ghost herpes yo ghost herpes is almost well, about no, that, okay? remakes don't suck just certain remakes suck there are good yeah, remakes there are three acceptable remakes the uh, thing invasion of the body snatchers and the crazies the blob yeah the, the fly i i don't know i i, I have I this agree with both Steve of McQueen, even though Get he's like 25 years old playing an 18 year old but it's okay i'll let it that does it matter the blob remake still good the fly I, make I still good. They're good, I, I but they're not no, the blob. Suspiria remake. Picture this: naked old ladies. <laughs> as far as naked, the eye can no, see. hold up. There's some man. naked hot chicks in Suspiria. Okay. Yeah, but the old lady, See, but the old, lady, the old ladies are a kink. See, so that's 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 only my thoughts about Suspiria it. You know? Remake is the ambiance of my life. Jessica Tandy coming out of the shower, just glistening. <laughs> <laughs> she does. It does look like Jessica. Oh, Tandy the end the, the show with a cold shower. Another great remake. The Evil Dead remake was good. Oh, that was hot fucking garbage. That shit was amazing. Oh my god, they kept saying, "And Android is the one who talked me into going to see this." I'm like, all right, so you made you made a right decision. That's all it is, you know. Yeah, sometimes you so make good decisions. On a just not hard enough to understand you that you did that. To the super expensive recliner movie theater. Did you fall asleep? And Pat fell asleep. That's my problem. I fall asleep in those chairs. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> there's an easy there's, start. There are two dudes sitting behind me. Wait. And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. I've never seen anything like this before. I'm like, it's called the original. <laughs> I would say Evil Dead Remake did a good job of being not like the original. 
I like the original Evil Dead. It was a straight up horror movie. This one was. The remake was a straight up horror movie. I see somebody fucking slow stroking while they were making this. Evil Dead, the Evil Dead remake is a straight horror movie. It's not like Evil Dead 2 where it's all wacky comedy. I, I, the, the remake lacked everything that made the original Evil Dead fun. It's, it's like a it, read. It's really, a I movie. hated each and every character in the fucking movie. The movie uh, killed them all off in 20 minutes. Okay. You, you know what? There's a show over, idea. I would walk out happy, but oh my god, I'm gonna take these keys and send back of me. I'm not gonna do any. Fuck I'm you. not gonna do any okay. of these drugs. I had a show idea a long time ago that was going to be a roundtable show, and it was going to be a debate show. Mm-hmm. And I think it needs to come back so that we can properly prepare for it, and we can show her why the Evil Dead remake is fantastic. <laughs> okay, so, so who's on my side? Golden. No one. Just say on- challenge accepted. Say challenge accepted. Challenge just accepted. Say peace. There you go. Fine. You go find someone to be on your I, side. Oh, we are totally. Oh no, I got people. I have okay. people. Go find one person. <laughs> I'll go find a person. We'll yeah. have we'll have moderators <laughs> keep us in line, and we have to listen to the moderators. They tell us to shut the fuck up. We got to shut the fuck up. I'm very strict about that, and right. we will have a debate. It's a duel. Take Listen. ten fucking paces. <laughs> I'm gonna do a bunch Russian of fucking... roulette. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. We will kill. Down. It, it is funny because Suzanne actually looks like Alexander Hamilton. So she's got that going for her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Shut down. You know. Oh. Um... That'll make you Aaron Burr in the situation. You better watch your watch your step, man. She might shoot first and uh, cheat or something. You know. And, uh... mm-hmm. But uh... <laughs> I never cheat. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, sorry, I'm not worried about it. It's not like she gets good practice debating on NFW. Man. Oh, are you kidding me, dude? Have you listened lately? <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate this movie. I uh I I, I <laughs> debates going on. This this whole thing was just practice because I have to have a debate tonight on Adam Green's Frozen. This is just a warm up right here. Uh, oh wow, fine. White like people get stuck on a ski lift and then they can't get down credits, you know. Oh no, there is like some really fucking disturbing shit in that. I don't know. Yes. That oh man, that scene I know, I know, I know you love it, Jerry. I when know he you do. drops down and you hear the bones crunching. Uh, oh no, my god. Uh, the most fucked up scene, nothing gory happens. It's literally just the girl talking about her dog who's a puppy starving to death because she's not going to be able to get home to re- to let it out and feed it. But the problem is with oh, Frozen yeah. is that though, this is white folks skiing and I'll be ghetto for life. See the west side, you know? So fucking much. <laughs> First of all, you don't live on the west side, okay? Uh, I live on northwest Indiana, so technically I am on the... Okay. West side. South side of fucking okay. Chicago right now, motherfucker. The Midwest. So represent oh. you're you're in the Midwest. You're only allowed to listen to Tech Nine and Bone Thugs and Harmony. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I have listened to both of those things, but I don't think that statement is true. Okay. I mean, you want to debate over it? No, because I haven't seen my bottom two yet, man. Come on, man. Oh, uh, okay. So your bottom two. Gotta, gotta pull the reins for this. My bottom two West Anderson films. Number this this fluctuated from viewings I, I did recently yesterday. Fantastic Mr. Fox is an, my number two choice. Um, I do love stop motion animation. I do love the um, the roll doll um, uh, um, adaptation done correctly. If you don't know what this film is, it's about a fox. They they they, they speak human languages, of course. Who steals who steals uh, hens. And he, just, he, he does for a living. He decides to go straight when his wife is pregnant. But then he doesn't go straight because he moves into the only place where these three crazy titans of industry live. And he plans to rob all three of them. Yeah. Now, George, George Clooney is playing the voice of the fox of Fantastic Mr. Fox. And it's not an accident because this is Ocean's Eleven with animated characters. <laughs> so I'm not saying this is a bad movie. And I have a lot of fun with it. It's just not in the top five and it's not even in my my favorite ones because there's there's one I didn't mention for sure that is better than this movie, which is the Grand Budapest Hotel. So in that 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 sense, it's in that bottom two. Um, what else? Oh, number number one, I still I still don't see the appeal of this movie. 
So this is a, I know Wes Wes Anderson. I want to create Craven again. Wes Anderson film I don't like. Um, the Darjeeling Limited. Darjeeling Limited is a film in which Adrian Brody stars, um, and and they they live in India, and he he brings his his brothers played by Jason Schwartzman, and um, oh Owen Wilson. I'm sorry. Uh, to India because their father got hit by a taxi cab and killed. He's played by Bill Murray for like 45 seconds. He's killed, obviously. So they go on like this spirit journey across India on, on varying trains. Eventually they find their mother, who's played by Angelica Hughes, who's like a nun in, in India, takes care of people. But the whole film is just <clears throat> an adventure that I don't care about. It's just, it's just I love, I'll give, I'll give what's, what's interesting this one thing, though. He took the, um, the real-life locations and showcased them very well in this movie. So if you want to see beautiful parts of India, and um, you, you can see this movie and really enjoy yourself because the scenery is beautiful. I just think that the story, out of all of his cinematography, is the weakest of the bunch. So that is my bottom one. Uh, Garchily Limited. Yeah, that one's a mixed one, too. I can see that. For sure. I've tried to watch that movie three or four times. I make it like ten minutes in. And it's like I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm out. I'm bored. Yeah, same here. I've never yeah. But if anybody wants, uh, I can rattle off my my quickie top five and bottom two Argentos. Actually, oh, sure. yeah, I would like to hear that because if Tenebrae's not number one, I'm going home. <laughs> you, Wait, you're you not home. Anything that I. Uh, Let's not question things I say. Just let it roll. <laughs> Just <laughs> put on, sir, put on. All right. And honestly, number five is Phenomena. It was one of the first Rosetta movies I watched. Dude, dude, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. a monkey. Iron, I, this is where I discussed that Flash of the Blade is my favorite Iron Maiden song. Yeah. Phenomena. I, I like Phenomenon. I cannot stand when they use the heavy metal in there because it does not fit oh, with no, the scene it's used. certain scenes it does not it's it just, oh, it's so it's bad like super badly cut in to begin with yeah. and it's not like that really you know slick score by claudio simonetti and number four get this tenebrae should have been number one this is ridiculous <laughs> shenanigans my top five well, I just, I love Tenebrae because it's like one of the most brutal murder mystery movies I've ever seen. There is just so much violence and it's, God, just layered on. I'm going to keep, like I said, I'm going to keep this under two minutes. Number three is Four Flies on Grey Velvet. I just dig this movie. I dig the quack science. It's fun as fuck. I, I, just, I just like the way it looks. Number two is Deep Red. It's... Great bloody it's that my favorite color of all time 70s cinema red. 70, 70s blood red <laughs> 70s blood red sort of number orange five. seriously do i have to show you guys the fucking tattoo on my arm you know what my number one favorite dario argento movie is dracula mother of tears <laughs> mother of tears we know we know <laughs> She has a tattoo of the praying mantis on her ass, okay? My cheap <laughs> Number two is Mother of Tears, because I watched it this way the whole time, going... <laughs> Why? It wasn't good. I just didn't think it, it wasn't that I mean, bad. supposed to be a sex in that movie, Pat. Deal with it. Yeah, You're a dude. You have a dick. I understand this. Do you, though? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jerry just turned the JP there. <laughs> and it's Dracula because a six foot praying mantis pretty much ruined my reason for being. That's your number one, though, for sure? Yeah, that's the that movie that I hate the most. I mean, number one, George Even the right. you love the most. No, <laughs> Suspiria. I went like five to one and then two to one on my bottoms. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. Bottoms. I love bottoms, bottoms, you know, they're amazing, you know. So. Oh, yeah, bottoms. <laughs> Dracula 3D was, yeah, it was fucking terrible. I'd probably say number one, Tenebrae, number two, Suspiria, uh, number three, Cat and Nine Tails, number four, Bird with Crystal Plumage, number five, Opera. I know, I, it was hard. I mean, this was, I, I pained over this list, but those are mine. I love, I love Deep Red. I just... There's just something, I 
I find the story so incredibly interesting. The Deep Red's the one that never hits with me. I don't know what really? it, every time I've watched it, That's it just doesn't. Number one. Deep it Red. doesn't. I mean, I I keep saying one day it's gonna click. One day it's gonna click, and it never has. Well, it, it won't. I mean, I've I don't try to push Argetto on anybody because it is definitely a pref- a personal preference. She doesn't I'm sure she doesn't. Uh, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I I, I, you, I look Karen. at Deep Red. Deep Red is in the same category that uh I've made in my head. That's fantastically made movie. I don't like it. And in there, you have movies like uh, Kubrick's The Shining. Every film that Kubrick's made is in Top that Gun. hole. Uh, no, <laughs> Top Gun is not a well-made movie. I have no credit for talking. But, like, The Shining and and Deep Red and uh, Gremlins, uh, it's movies that I can understand why people like it, and I can see it's very well-made. Doesn't click with me, and I don't like it, so it goes in there. You know, it's not like a... I've like, never seen E.T. I started watching E.T. several times. Yeah. I've got no fucking interest. Yeah. Because then there's movies that I just don't like. I don't think they're good movies. I don't think they're well made. They're bad. Like, I, and everyone hates, like, I hate the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it's horrible. Oh, I love the original. I hate Gremlins. Awful. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's another podcast. Jerry I hate hates Nancy. TV. I fuck it. She ruined the movie. If you just take her out. And replace her with like Ashley Lawrence from Hellraiser. That movie goes up from zero points to five points just off her acting. I agree. Man, (laughs) you see this, Willis? Look at right now. Suzanne could not fucking resist to give that fucking Argento countdown. (laughs) I specifically said, "Don't be so damn obvious about it." At least you want to say, scusi, scusi. Oh, I just nipped the puff. No, no, no. I got it. I got it. You know. And Willis is just like, at least you had the one with the fucking monkey on it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. oh, the my reaction God. of Willis to the monkey is like, yeah, man. Yeah, it's just like, the end. That's the same. You need that in your life. So you need Donald Pleasance and a goddamn chimpanzee, okay? You need that in your life. <laughs> Donald Pleasance with a Scottish accent. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, this oh, was God, fun. Gonna fucking die when we watch Shockma. Anybody else made a backup list that they want to spot <laughs> off right now? This is the time, Jerry. I, no, I did not. I made I one list. Not, I, yeah. I I recorded uh like an hour before we did this. I have to record again in thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, I didn't have time. <laughs> Cameron, Sorry. what about you, sir? No, I, I didn't. I actually have another podcast I got to do in about two hours. So. I got notes I got to do for that, but yeah. If, I, next time, I already got one picked out. If we do this again, though, I want to oh. do Quentin Tarantino. All right, boo boo. Yeah, I got not uh, like the same. I was just playing on the one, uh, but maybe next time I'll have more than one. See, I will. Suzanne... Well, I was going to have a backup our general list. Suzanne broke the rules, people. She had one chance to do this. She fucked it up. See what she did there, you know? Oh my god! I'm looking <laughs> at you, people. <laughs> On the YouTube exactly. and uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna leave it at that. This has been the spread. I'm gonna let these guys pimp their stuff now. Jerry, what do you have coming besides you know everything coming out of your your bottom parts there? What's, what's coming up, sir? You know, uh, Kill the Cast will have Frozen coming out this week. Uh, Atomic Age Saucer Cast will have Matinee coming out this week. Underwater Kaiju just released Godzilla vs. Hedora. Um, Colts on No One Won't Record for like two weeks, and uh, that's it. Uh, all my sideshows are on Kill the Cast and Legion. Cool, Cameron, lay down, us, brother. <clears throat> oh, well, right now I'm recording a couple different shows all under the the label of that Cinema T Generation that I'm starting. Um, <clears throat> I'm recording an episode of something called Old Not Obsolete uh, later on tonight, where we review movies specifically on. Laserdisc and VHS. Wow. And, uh, so we're doing, uh, we did Maniac last week, and this week, uh, uh, or tonight, we're doing House. So I'm recording that. And I got a couple more coming up, but don't want to uh, mention those until I've actually recorded them. Yes. Always a good plan, sir. Yeah. But everything else I got going on has been canceled due to quarantine. Yeah. Mm. Well, the one in Sweden started to make movies again, so maybe the Swedes have uh, bit the finger on the pulse, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Suzanne. 
Uh, we just finished up Snake Month on NFW, so you get to hear Snake Facts. Then stop. Snake, snake Facts. No, stop about snakes. I'm really not sure what we're diving into next, but it could be a month of Sue Picks. You never yeah. know. It could be. Maybe not. It's probably not. Oh, it's definitely not because Willis is going to hate them all. <laughs> yeah, make them it. Up. Make, make them interesting, girl. Make them interesting. All day, every day. Boo boo. What about you, sir? Uh, actually, uh, original sin attack. I think we are recording next weekend as well. We're doing finally our trauma show. We're going to be talking about some trauma movies. Uh, then uh, cellulite dissections is actually recording. Uh, this week, uh, we are doing uh, Death Wish, the original oh. Charlie Bronson film. A hey, Pali. You know. what, what are you doing for the trauma show, I have to ask? Uh, Tromeo and Juliet, Father's Day and the Taint. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> the Taint is a movie in which guys have creamy ejaculating dicks throughout the movie, and then some guy on a skateboard shoots them off. Yeah, and, exploding yes. penises everywhere. <laughs> and just when you think it couldn't get better. Uh, there is some good head crushing in it, though, so I'll give it that. Yeah. And some, some bottom head crushing. So it's all about dicks in that movie. I crush your head. Crush your head. <laughs> oh, I thought she was showing my dick size to everyone. Mm. I was like, how the fuck do you know? <laughs> She's a psychic. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Boo Boo. Continue, man. You got more stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, also, uh, their hair podcast, which I do with uh, Miss Lacey Lou. Uh, we actually just recorded our episode on foreign horror, where yeah, we we watched some fucked up movies that episode. We watched In a Glass Cage and fucking Good Night, Mommy. Yeah, I watched. I watched yeah, Good Night, I, Mommy. It's kind of jacked up. Yeah, In a Glass Cage is one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. It'll make you look at Willy Wonka in a different eyes. I, I felt the need to take a bath with steel wool after I watched it. <laughs> exactly. Just don't jerk off with it. It hurt a lot. Uh, I don't know that from experience. You know. Well, there's a lot of jerking off in that movie. <laughs> um, Slugware's face. <laughs> Slugware's face. Yeah. Getting that, getting that chocolate bukkake, that never ending, that never, that everlasting gobstopper all over his face. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like uh, you just said a bunch of things Willis types into Pornhub. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't type this, 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 uh, this line of dialogue in the Willy Wonka script, but you know, you suck them and suck them and suck them and they never get any smaller is a line in the Willy Wonka film about the everlasting job stopper. Okay. I didn't make this line. Somebody else wrote this line. That would be and, Roald Dahl. And thought it was appropriate for children. Or in Roald Dahl's case, to fuck with children, which is why he's my, my favorite a- authors of all time, even to this day. Hell yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and unexpected. And finally, I think uh, I think Gary will actually be saying that one. So yeah, you could do that for me, Gary. That's fine. Yeah, Derek, Derek, and Carly, his um, from his his partner from the Cellular Dissections podcast, will be joining me and whoever else is going to come on for Isle of Dogs and the Plague Dogs, which Suzanne refuses to come on because it's going to make her sad and she doesn't want to come on that show. See, thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so it'd be podcast, two drink minimum commentaries, burning for Springwood, all can be found at legionpodcast.com. That's all I'm up to right now. Follow me on Instagram, beefy beard, uh, at some beef cast on Twitter, uh, donate to the Legion relief, uh, fund that they have going on right now for the stupid fucking virus situation we're dealing with. We're raising money to have our helper out our, our, Less less than fortunate jobless podcasters, you know, and that sounds insulting, but they're not working right now, unfortunately. Um, yeah. yeah, very important uh, to help out your 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 fellow man. But I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope we all had fun. I did. Right. I thought this. I thought it was a great first run. I, I thought Hell it was. Yeah, I had fun doing this. Jerry the Optimist, great. what do you think, sir? It's a neat concept. Uh, it's good. I'll I'll hit you up with my comments. Uh, for tweaking stuff. But okay. uh, it was fun. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this has been The Spread. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for watching. I want to say listening, but you're watching us right now. And uh, subscribe to the Legion YouTube channel. 
All right. Bye-bye now. Peace. Bye. Bye.